A very warm welcome to all the eminent speakers and participants to the India CGD Forum webinar on collaboration between city gas distribution and electricity distribution companies to accelerate transition to gas-based economy, jointly being organized by India Smart Grid Forum and Natural Gas Society. As you're aware, CGD is an emerging business opportunity in the Indian market and can be accelerated through the collaboration between city gas distribution and electricity distribution companies to provide to move towards a gas-based economy. Several assets like customer data, GIS maps, call centers, and common billing system can be shared for the accelerated growth of the government's mission to make India a gas-based economy by 2025. This webinar will provide a platform for a discussion on gas utilities and electri electricity utilities for collaboration and asset sharing. We'll be having the inauguration ceremony with the welcome address by Sri Reji Kumar Pillay, President ISGF, Special Address by Shri E.S. Ranganathan, Director, Marketing Gale, and Inaugural Address by Shri Tarun Kapoor, Secretary, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas, followed by the launch of the India CGT Forum website. Going further, we'll have a presentation on introduction of India CGT Forum by Ms. Reena Suri, Executive Director, ISGF, a theme presentation by Shri D.V. Shastri, Executive Director, Natural Gas Society, and presentation on Cloud as Enabler for Digital Transformation in CGDs by Sri Sainath from Amazon Web Services. Joining the panel discussion, we have Ms. Anjali Chandra, member P PERC, Sri Rajiv Sikha, Chief Executive Officer, Indian Oil Adani Gas, Sri Sanjay Banga, President TND Tata Power Company Limited, Sri Anil Rawal, MD and CEO, IntelliSmart. Shri uh, Rajendra Cholan, Managing Director, Bescom. Shri Sanjay Shinde, Deputy Managing Director, Mahanagar Gas Limited. Uh, Shri Sujit Troikar, General Manager, Marketing, MNGL. And uh, Ms. Uh, Deepti Dutt, Head Strategic uh, in Initiatives, uh, Public Sector, Amazon Web Services. And the moderator for the panel will be Mr. Reggie Pillay. Uh, the vote of thanks will be by Shri D.V. Shastri. Here are the glimpses of our eminent speakers. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Reji Kumar Pillay, President ISGF, for the welcome address. Mr. Reji Pillay is the President of India Smart Grid Forum since its inception in 2011 and is also the Chairman of Global Smart Energy Federation since November 2016. He is an internationally renowned expert with nearly four decades of experience in the electricity sector in diverse functions covering the entire value chain and across continents. Over to you, sir. You can go back to the previous slide with all the speakers displayed. Previous slide. Yeah. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants from around the globe. It, it indeed a great pleasure for ISGF to partner with Natural Gas Society to come out with this uh, India CGD forum and the first webinar which we are doing now. So I take this opportunity to welcome our chief guest of the day, Sri Tarun Kapoor, Secretary, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, who had uh, launched the India CGD Forum in March 2021 uh, as part of our India Smart Utility Week. And uh, Mr. Kapoor been a great supporter of this um, marriage between the proposed marriage oh, between electricity distribution companies and the gas distribution companies and he been guiding us on this uh, initiative and sir will be joining uh, in another 15 to 20 minutes uh, as uh, you all know there is a new minister uh, for the png now so there are some meetings which are uh, going on and he will be joining the moment he is free from there and he will be inaugurating this uh, webinar i <clears throat> take the pressure of inviting Sri Ranganathan sir, uh, Director Gale. Uh, we had the pleasure of working closely with him in his previous role when he was uh, Managing Director of uh, Indra Prasad Gas Limited. So a warm welcome to Ranganathan sir for this uh, webinar. And also uh, Mr. D.V. Shastri, who, are we, who uh, the uh, Executive Director of Natural Gas Society, who is co-hosting this uh, uh, webinar with uh, ISGF. In the panel, I come to, oh, Mr. Rajiv Sika, who is the CEO of Indian Oil Adani Gas Private Limited. A warm welcome to you, sir. And uh, Madam Anchiti Chandra, member of Punjab Electricity, Electricity Regulatory Commission, uh, who has uh, uh, consented to take part in this webinar. 
Uh, also, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, also take the opportunity to welcome Sri Sanjay Banga, who is President of Tata Power uh, Company Limited. Uh, Mr. Anil Ravel, who is the CEO of Indeli Smart, he will also be joining in another 10 minutes time. Uh, Indeli Smart, has, as many of you perhaps from the gas domain do not know, it's an initiative of uh, Energy Efficiency Services Limited who has launched a smart metering program uh, two years ago for uh, uh, all the electricity companies in India. Uh, currently, UP, uh, Bihar, Haryana, a couple of states, they have already rolled out smart okay, meter as, as a service, as a monthly service. The utilities okay. are not buying. Okay. So those who are not speaking may kindly turn your mic off. So uh, ESL launched its initiative uh, in 2018, offering smart metering as a service against a monthly fee. Uh, so the utility need not invest, make any capital, capital investment on setting up the smart metering system. And uh, Indeli Smart is a dedicated uh, uh, subsidiary of uh, in, in Indeli Smart, and they will be leading this uh, smart metering uh, mission in the country in a big way. And that can be extended to gas distribution companies as well. So he'll be making a presentation on the uh, common backend they are creating that can be extended to other domains as well. Uh, I have the pleasure and honor of in uh, welcoming Mr. Rajendra Cholan, Managing Director of Bangalore Electricity Supply Company Limited, uh, and uh, also Mr. Deepak Savant from Mahanagar Gas Limited. Mr. Sanjay Shinde is uh, Mahanagar Gas Limited as MD. Uh, warm welcome to you, sir. And um, my ex colleague and friends, uh, Deepti Dutt and uh, Saina Dadkavi from uh, Amazon Web Services. I a warm welcome to both of you, Deepti and Saina. Uh, we look forward to the deliberations. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, as uh, Professor has uh, already said, it's a very interesting, interesting topic which will uh, generate interest among the gas distribution companies and the electricity distribution companies. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Ashima. Thank you, Mr. Pillay for the welcome address. Uh, I would now like to request uh, Shri E.S. Ranganathan, Director Marketing Gail, for the special address. E.S. Ranganathan, Director Marketing Gail, is an instrumentation and a control engineer possessing an MBA with specialization in marketing. Shri Ranganathan possesses a re rich experience of over 35 years in leading, managing, and implementing large projects and business solutions in oil and gas sector. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are not audible, Rangadan, sir. Ranganathan, sir, we can't hear you. Ashima, please talk to his office and tell them to fix the problem in the audio. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you, sir. Thank okay. you. Sorry about that. That was a problem. <laughs> More technical glitch. So a very warm good afternoon to all of you, especially to our uh, dear ex-chairman, CCR Prasad, my colleagues, uh, Sanjay Shinde from MGL, Mr. Ruhikar from uh, MNGL, Mr. Rajiv Sikha, Chief Executive Officer, uh, 
Mr. D. V. Shastri, Mr. Rajiv Kumar Pillai, Mr. Sanjay Banga, and all the other distinguished panelists and participants of this webinar, which is addressing the collaboration between city gas distribution and electrical distribution companies. <coughs> As you all know, Government of India has set a target to increase the share of natural gas in the primary energy mix of the country from 6.2% to 15% by 2030. In order to achieve this, approximately 60 to 70 billion US dollars is to be invested over the next four to five years to create a robust gas infrastructure in the country. This includes city gas distribution network, cross-country pipelines, and LNG terminals. The natural gas demand in the CGD sector has shown a fast growth over the past three years. The performance of CGD entities was somewhat muted in the last financial year because of the unprecedented situation in the country brought about by the pandemic. Timelines of city gas distribution projects being implemented were hit because of the lockdown situation in some of the months of the year, even after lifting of restrictions, the delay in restarting of operations have caused by a lack of availability of adequate workers and equipment. However, even in the face of crisis, the CGD entities have outperformed their target as far as number of CNG stations are concerned. Further, CGD entities did a tremendous job of lessening the shortfall between targets and actions in case of domestic PNG connection also. While aggressively rolling out the CGD infrastructure, necessary measures for monitoring of minimum work program targets and intervention with states and other stakeholders are being done by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and also the regulator, the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board to ensure timely operationalization of this infrastructure. CGD is an emerging business opportunity in the Indian market and the entities can effectively collaborate with other utility companies which are operating in their respective GAs. In fact, some of the new private players, those who have entered CGD are actually electric utilities uh, and, you know, in India, we don't have competition between electricity and gas as far as the appliances uh, go. This collaboration among utilities and entities can accelerate the growth of all partners by sharing their infrastructure and resources. They can collectively approach to customers by sharing their customer data. Several assets like customer data, GIS map, call center, and a common billing system can be shared for the accelerated growth of the government's mission to make India a gas-based economy. All partners have similar opportunity and challenges in dealing with millions of customers, and that will significantly reduce the cost of business for all partners. They also have to address similar customer behavior and also defaults. A pilot project was put in place in Delhi and Ajmer between Indrapastha Gas Limited and Tata Power and has been found working well for the entities as well as the customers. Similar efforts are in the pipeline in the state of Orissa by Gale and Tata Power. There are many services which are similar in nature. As I already said, periodic metering is one, billing, customer support, etc. Apart from handling regulatory challenges and statutory compliances in restricted corridor of roads and lanes in the towns. A good collaboration will lead to less damage to each other's property while carrying out repairs and maintenance and will improve the customer experience. We will require more innovative business ideas for the potential collaboration between CGD and electrical distribution utilities in order to ensure the availability, affordability, and accessibility of energy for marching towards a gas-based economy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Over sir.
Thank you very much, sir, for the special address. Uh, we are just going to we are waiting for Mr. Tarun Kapoor to join for the inaugural address. He'll be joining any minute. I just check with his office if he's taking more time. Maybe the other speeches could uh, take place in between. And whenever Sir joins, we can stop that. Yes, sir. I'll quickly checking, sir. Ashima, we can start the next presentation. When Sir comes, we can stop. Right, sir. Uh, I would like to invite Ms. Reena Suri to give a brief introduction of the Indian uh, City Gas Distribution Forum and with us its objectives, goals, and programs in pipeline. Ms. Uh, Serena Suri brings over 19 years of experience in the energy sector. She's responsible for the research projects, advisory service, business development, training, and development. How to activity version of ISGF. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Ashima, and uh, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all our participants and our distinguished uh, guests and panelists. Uh, in. Am I audible? And uh, I hope my voice is clear. Yes, ma'am, yes, you are very much audible. Thank you so much. So um, let me just quickly share my screen and give you a brief overview of uh, the objectives and uh, the idea behind establishing this forum. Reena is visible? Yes, Reena. Yes. So uh, again, a uh, warm welcome to this uh, webinar, the very first webinar that we have organized uh, under the um, uh, the India City Gas Distribution Forum that we have uh, formulated and uh, uh, established. So before I start a uh, brief intro, or like, you know, I would like to give a brief intro about India Smart Grid Forum. As most of you know us, uh, but for for the uh, uh, you know for those who don't know India Smart Grid Forum and uh, what we are and why are we uh, conducting this forum, just a brief overview I wanted to give. It's a PPP initiative of Ministry of Power, uh, uh, Government of India, established in 2011, and we are a not-for-profit society. We are responsible to accelerate development of smart grid technologies in the India power sector with the development of global smart standards, uh, training, capacity building, technology uh, uh, selection, uh, support uh, to the utilities. We are a member-based organization comprising of uh, uh, ministries, utilities, um, technology providers, academia, research. And uh, we work with our members or with the eight uh, working groups on uh, uh, different uh, key domains of smart grid, uh, uh, like grid modernization, smart metering, AI and analytics, uh, 
digital architecture and the renewable energy microgrid and electric mobility and so on and so forth. And we have also um, uh, with the uh, like you know a, a request from a lot of different stakeholders, we have also started uh, our working groups on smart grass and smart water. And we are a think tank uh, working on uh, smart grids and smart utilities. These are some of the key uh, domains that we work on uh, smart grid, renewable energy, uh, cybersecurity, smart cities, metering, and uh, smart water and gas. And we work um, at, with the, to, you know, on uh, policy advocacy uh, documents. We support the development of standards, roadmaps, rollout strategy plans. Uh, uh, work on smart grid uh, uh, roadmaps for the utilities so that they can leapfrog in the journey towards bringing the smartness in the systems, uh, support them with feasibility reports, uh, uh, RFP preparation. Um, and one of our main uh, mandate is to have the uh, training and capacity building uh, for the sector, which we really work towards by doing a lot of programs uh, and we bring a lot of international expertise by doing bilateral workshop, bring taking people to our international uh, programs. Won't go into the details. Uh, these are some of the uh, current uh, key advisory assignments that we have worked on, uh, uh, apart from the very first one, which was the very first initiative uh, with Ministry of Power. We worked on issuing a smart grid vision and roadmap for uh, India. And apart from that, as I mentioned, that we've been working on uh, uh, preparing roadmaps for the utilities, working on uh, some new uh, innovative uh, ideas and technologies. Uh, also, we've done a lot of work on uh, uh, electric vehicle and charging infrastructure, uh, which is uh, one of the key initiatives which uh, uh, you know the utilities are moving forward towards. We we, uh, we bring out a lot of uh, white papers. These are some of the uh, latest uh, ones I've uh, put together. So, one of the mandate is uh, knowledge dissemination with the. Uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned that we uh, uh, want to bring a lot of expertise uh, from uh, different countries and uh, th there's a lot of scope to learn from each other, learn from uh, the best, best practices that are available so that we don't face the same challenges and we can uh, uh, like, you know, have uh, uh, learn from them and uh, not make the same uh, mistakes. So with that, uh, we have uh, we do a lot of work towards knowledge dissemination for the sector. Uh, we have a portal uh, which is a, a smart grid portal which was launched in 2013 and it is, it is updated on a daily basis with the current news and uh, programs in the sector. And uh, we come out with uh, a bulletin on a monthly basis since 2014 covering the projects, uh, different um, uh, you know technology updates and programs. Uh, uh, from uh, India and around the world, and it is uh, 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 circulated to more than 70,000 people uh, uh, around the world. And with the same agenda, we initiated two uh, uh, programs, uh, conference and exhibitions. Uh, it's uh, our uh, India Smart Utility Week uh, since 2015 we've been conducting, and uh, this is uh, one of the top uh, uh, programs uh, on uh, smart grids now, and uh, the eighth edition we'll be holding in 2022. It's a five day program that we do. And apart from that uh, uh, distribution utility meet, we started uh, with the idea of bringing all the utilities together to learn from each other. There's a lot to learn from outside, but of course, within uh, India, we have a lot of utilities who some are ahead in terms of technology, some technology adoption, some are uh, lagging. So they can learn from each other, uh, share their experiences and uh, uh, going forward. So for building the capacity of the sector, we have uh, been doing a lot of training programs on uh, different topics of smart grid. And um, uh, with the COVID, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, poor people working from home and not being able to come together, we have we had started our online training programs and we have trained more than a thousand people uh, since 2000, May 2020. We've been conducting a lot of uh, uh, programs, workshops around uh, city gas distribution, bringing different stakeholders together to discuss the different technologies that are being. Uh, uh, just give me a sec. Sorry, <laughs> different technologies which are uh, uh, available and uh, uh, you know can be adopted for the sector. So since 2018, we've been uh, uh, working on. Uh, having all the stakeholders together, including the gas distribution people, as well as the Indian uh, power utilities. 
and uh, uh, with India Smart Utility Week, uh, we have uh, ha held workshops. Uh, so already we've held uh, three workshops, uh, four workshops, and uh, even uh, we brought uh, the utilities together with the distribution, city gas distribution companies uh, with our distribution utility meet in 2019, where uh, they discussed and um, uh, uh, you know the collaboration between, as uh, Mr. Pillai has already mentioned that, uh, uh, there's a lot uh, that you know the city gas distribution companies can uh, leverage uh, from the infrastructure which is already there uh, for the electricity sector. So uh, uh, with that idea, we have been uh, bringing and conducting, uh, bringing stakeholders together and conducting uh, different workshops. Uh, the last seminar on uh, smart uh, city gas distribution we had conducted in 2021. And uh, also introduced the uh, we brought experts together to talk about the green hydrogen technology, which is uh, uh, which is the latest that is coming up in the sector. So that was a brief introduction about India Smart uh, Grid Forum. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, take you through our uh, 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 the India Smart Grid uh, uh, in India City Gas Distribution Forum. Uh, uh, details about what is it and uh, why we have put this together and what we our plans are going forward. So this is an initiative of uh, India Smart Grid Forum uh, in partnership uh, in association with Natural Gas uh, Society. It's a joint uh, collaborative uh, forum that we have formulated. So this was launched by uh, Sri uh, Kapoor, uh, Secretary Ministry of uh, Petroleum and Natural Gas in um, on uh, f uh, 4th of March 2021 as part of our annual event, India Smart Utility Week. The objective of this forum is to bring uh, uh, various stakeholders, uh, technology interventions and, uh, uh, you know, the be best practices as, uh, together for these stakeholders in the city gas domain. We would, we would uh, you know, with this forum, we would be facilitating the new entities in the city gas distribution. We'll be supporting and uh, promoting the initiatives of the government of India towards the gas based economy. And, um, uh, and one of the prime objective is, as uh, mentioned, that is to support collaboration between uh, city gas distribution companies and electricity distribution companies. This will um, uh, like you know, this handshake will help uh, reduce the cost of business for the gas companies and also enhance the customer satisfaction going forward. And uh, uh, we'll also create a, a value added uh, for the consumers to have, a, like you know, with a single bin bill mechanism, billing and payment mechanism for the gas and uh, electricity utility. So we have, uh, uh, as our executive council members. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Rina. Uh, Mr. Tarun Kapoor has joined the platform. Okay, excellent. So we'll, um, I'll yeah. continue after Mr. Kapoor's inaugural address. Uh, thank you so much, Ashima. Uh, what you you stop sharing the screen so that uh, Kapoor's profile can be yes. uploaded by Ashima. Stop. Warm welcome, sir. Good afternoon and uh, thank you for organizing this and thank yes, you for inviting thank me. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to extend an invite to Sri Tarun Kapoor for the inaugural address and launch the India CGD Forum website. Sri Tarun Kapoor is secretary to the government of India in the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. He's a member of the Indian Administrative Service with over 33 years of experience at the state and national levels. Under his chairmanship and guidance, India Smart Grid Forum and Natural Gas Society has created the India CGD Forum. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you. So, uh, good afternoon to all the participants and um, nice to connect with you, especially on this subject, which is so innovative and uh, uh, maybe so useful for the consumers all over the country. Uh, what you are suggesting is that the city gas distribution companies and the electricity distribution companies can come together and uh, uh, be uh, uh, be a part of this change which is happening all over the country the consumer uh, looks for convenience the consumer also looks for lower price and energy which is uh, uh, which is uh, without breaks which is uh, uh, reliable and uh, over the years, 
the uh, power sector has also become more and more professional more and more driv it driven and uh, automation has also come in uh, city gas distribution is a new sector where uh, companies are still in the process of laying down infrastructure not too many connections so far because only 78 lakh households are connected so far out of a total of maybe uh, the, the the target could be some 30 crore households so we have a long way to go so at this stage some good collaborations with with a sector which is which is already well established could do wonders uh, a consumer should be very happy if he uh, if he if there is one agency billing him for all various types of energy now uh, i was just thinking uh, what kind of connections does a normal household need as on today it's it's like uh, it's like life support if you build a house it's not complete unless it has a power connection there's a internet connection there's a telephone connection now there's a piped gas connection and there is a television um, uh, some uh, dish or, or or something or a cable so so many connections almost like a life lifeline for a household and same would be true about an office or or um, industry and all these are on commercial lines all these first you need a connection and then you someone has to maintain that connection and then you pay for it which means billing and all those other activities take place and a consumer sometimes has to deal with so many agencies it becomes so difficult to keep track and uh, also keep uh, uh, have knowledge about quality and what options are available and uh, and uh, uh, what to expect and what to ask for so if various agencies can collaborate or a third party can come to provide an interface between the consumer and uh, all the agencies supplying these services i think it can work wonders for the consumer because then he just deals with one agency and if that agency is also a professional agency uh, which would ensure good service and which would also be able to educate the consumer give him various options and let him choose and but then manage the whole um, uh, 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 whole system for the consumer i think it will it will really work wonders this also throws a huge business opportunity for uh, such third party companies to come in and maybe may result in savings because uh, right now uh, i've seen um, uh, power companies earlier they used to have their own staff for re reading the meter and then uh, going back and giving data and then billing and then they started hiring third parties for doing this and then we've also seen the uh, water uh, 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 water bills and then because water bills generally get delayed there's a lot of inefficiency there so they they generally get delayed and then sometimes huge accumulated bills come to the consumer and that also creates a problem so uh, 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 if if there is a, a single agency then a lot of cost saving would also take place because the kind of manpower you need for all this it's uh, uh, that would reduce the billing would be timely so that would also uh, uh, ensure that the uh, the companies who are dealing with this don't have to invest working capital because right now the situation is that in certain states water bills and electricity bills are not monthly they they are given three every three months or over a longer period of time and that much money uh, remains blocked so probably it will it will uh, uh, also result in savings for the companies which are into this uh, this job and then technology of course can play a very good role and and uh, if we have professionals coming in then certainly smart metering and uh, also 
proper IT system so that flow of information is also a very good and and uh, um, uh, gives a lot of assurance to the customer. So uh, I think this is a brilliant idea, and uh, uh, we should all come together to try to implement this idea. We could start with some pilots and then expand as we move along, uh, which will be win-win for everyone. So thank you for organizing this, and thank you for inviting me here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of the minister's meeting and coming to address us. And uh, look forward to your continued guidance and support for actually implementing that pilot projects. And uh, last time when we came to meet, uh, I talked about uh, the Italy Smart building a common backend for smart metering in the electricity sector that can be extended to the gas metering. And uh, you would have heard that Government of India now. Uh, approved a program for 250 million smart meters in the electricity okay. sector. When we go implement yes, install smart meters for the electricity company, Ma any of Hello. the C new CGD areas we could do smart uh, gas meters as well. Okay. The last mile communication can be same. And the ISGFR and NGS has already returned to uh, the, the India <coughs> Bureau of Indian Standard to come out with a standard for uh, gas meters. We have a Indian standard for uh, electricity meters but for the gas meters also a standard will be prepared yeah. so we look forward to your support for all this yeah. and we are at a unique yeah. point now we have a common yeah. item for smart city as well as for uh, uh, ministry of petroleum and natural gas so with the minister's support this idea can be taken into the smart city program in a big way so over to you sir for the inauguration and unveiling of the yeah. India CGD forum website so request you to kindly launch the India CGT forum website. You could declare open, sir. So I declare the India CGT website. India CGT forum website. Yes. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, sir. A comprehensive portal where all information regarding CGD and uh, electricity will be available. Thank you. Thank so you, sir. I would Thank just you request uh, you for a small group photograph, sir. I would request all the uh, speakers on the panel right now for a quick uh, group photograph. Please open the cameras, yes. Uh, we request participants to please keep your cameras off so we can have a speaker panel photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think Kapoor Sabas is is there. Thank you then. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The link for the website. The link for the website has been posted in the chat box and you can visit the website through the link. Uh, Ms. Reena, you can uh, continue with a brief introduction of India CGT forum. Okay, then we uh, we will do the uh, website uh, review later. Uh, I just finished this first. Huh? My screen is visible. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I've I've shared the objectives of the forum and uh, our. Uh, our current executive council has uh, chairmanship of uh, Sri Tarun Kapoorji, uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. D. V. Shastri, uh, the executive uh, director of Natural Gas Society, and uh, Mr. Reji Kumar Pillay, and uh, pre uh, President India Smart Grid Forum, as the members of the current uh, executive council of the uh, forum. Some of the initiatives that we have undertaken or uh, wish to undertake are uh, development of this uh, knowledge portal, which we have launched today. 
so we will be uh, populating it with uh, relevant uh, content from the sector bringing all the possible uh, knowledge uh, from uh, uh, overseas and india together uh, uh, so that this is a one stop shop for all uh, uh, knowledge enhancement of uh, uh, cgd sector as well as the electricity sector. we'll be organizing webinars uh, uh, workshops, training, capacity building programs uh, for the stakeholders of the gas and electric electricity sector. Uh, we will be uh, 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 we will do the development of online stakeholder network of uh, gas uh, ecosystem partners. Uh, not only through the these uh, collaborative workshops and all, but we have a very uh, popular social media platform that we have created, uh, uh, which we'll be uh, using uh, for bringing all those ecosystem partners together. We'll be working together with our members uh, on research reports, uh, technical reports, bringing out white papers on the la latest technologies and practices in the sector. And um, uh, we will be uh, country. We will be working on bringing uh, the electricity and gas uh, stakeholders together for uh, 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 po po you know exploring possible collaborations uh, between them. And um, uh, lastly, uh, I've also already mentioned about the social media platform that we'll be using uh, for the collaboration. So these are some of the initiatives uh, uh, I've just uh, uh, we have put forward. Uh, Knowledge portal has been launched. Uh, the webinar uh, has been uh, 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 like you know conducted. We are conducting today. We have a very popular LinkedIn page with 400 plus uh, members. Uh, and uh, last but not least, a very important initiative to start with. We have undertaken of mapping of statewide electric uh, utilities with gas distribution companies. So in each state, which are the electric utilities and which are the uh, gas distribution companies available? We have done the mapping so that it is readily available for uh, uh, all the domain uh, companies to uh, look at and uh, see which uh, you know uh, who they want to uh, collaborate, and uh, we can connect them with the, each other to uh, take this partnership off. And this forum uh, membership is uh, absolutely uh, you know. Uh, Free of cost, and um, all members of ISGF NGS will be invited uh, or have been invited uh, for uh, becoming the members here. And if you wish to become a member, you can just drop a mail uh, to this email ID. So, with that, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that was a brief introduction about the forum, and with your support and uh, your continued uh, part, uh, participation, we hope uh, to be able to uh, take this forum and uh, you know to, uh, do a lot of good uh, work. Uh, for the gas distribution sector as well as the electricity sector. Ashima, I'll stop sharing the presentation here, and maybe you can uh, share the slides for the uh, portal, and I can quickly take uh, everyone through that, and uh, then uh, we will uh, go over to the theme presentation. So go back. Is this the first slide? Yes. We can start uh, with explaining the features of the. Okay, so yes, as I mentioned, uh, like you know, the uh, this is our uh, uh, portal that we have uh, put together. You know, we have designed, developed, uh, and uh, we are launching today. This uh, portal is uh, a joint initiative of uh, ISGF and NGS, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Amazon Web Services for. Uh, uh, supporting uh, this initiative and joining us as our powered by partner. Thank you so much uh, for uh, uh, this, and uh, we hope with your uh, partnership and uh, support, uh, we will be able to make this a very useful uh, tool. Next. So, our homepage uh, would display a banner of all our current activities. We will have the details of the Executive Council members here. Uh, next. We will be covering uh, the details, uh, you know, the key initiatives in this section of what's new. We will be, we have a detailed resource center that we have already created of the policies and uh, different regulations that are available in the gas sector. And um, uh, we will be covering uh, the expert buys from senior officials of uh, the uh, gas and electricity domain sector. Next. So the navigation of this uh, portal uh, lets you uh, learn about uh, the forum. Uh, it gives you details about who are our uh, members uh, under the About Ties uh, India CGD forum uh, link and uh, how to join us as a member. And uh, 
Next link uh, provides you the details about the initiatives uh, that uh, I uh, this forum will be undertaking. The webinars, workshop will be organizing, uh, the different uh, training programs, projects, and also there is a link uh, for as I mentioned that we have done the mapping uh, of CGD uh, companies with this comp. So this link uh, uh, provides you uh, under the initiatives, the mapping with this comp. Provide you the details of that. We will be creating a comprehensive resource center uh, covering the policies, regulations, uh, with documents and statistics available from the sector, technologies, uh, which are the current tenders, uh, various uh, links for magazines and uh, expert bites, and the useful links uh, for uh, uh, covering the whole gamut of uh, uh, different uh, technologies and uh, uh, you know, news available from the sector. So news and events will be covered and also a uh, media link will give you the uh, pictures and videos of all our programs and uh, uh, related uh, 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 like you know, videos will be cover, put together here. Next. So this is a glimpse of uh, the uh, uh, mapping of the discounts that we have uh, uh, put together. This is uh, a USP of uh, our portal. Uh, uh, which is you know it's uh, which is a niche approach which uh, encourages the utilities in the future to share their assets uh, like GS maps, common billing, etc., and uh, gives a, a overall idea of each other, uh, the CGD and the utilities to know who are uh, well uh, present in their area of uh, domain, uh, domain area. Next. Next, that's it. And so, that's the end. So yeah, so I I think this is a brief overview of the portal that we are launching today, and uh, the uh, URL has already been shared. It is www.indiacgd.in. We request you to please uh, visit the portal, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, uh, like you know uh, uh, get some information and uh, any relevant content you may wish to share with us uh, that can be shared on the portal for uh, a larger audience please feel free to do that and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll try our best to make it a very informative and uh, uh, tool and uh, uh, you know which will be useful for both the sec uh, both the domains so thank you so much uh, with that uh, and uh, over to you ashim Thank you, ma'am, for explaining the features of the India CGD Forum website. Now I would like to invite uh, Sri Devi Shastri, Executive Director, Natural Gas Society, to give the theme presentation on collaboration between city gas distribution and electricity distribution companies to accelerate transition to gas-based economy. Mr. Shastri, with 36 plus years of experience in natural gas industry, encompassing its technical and managerial aspects, such as project management, operations, and maintenance of natural gas pipelines, and more. He's among the founder members of CAVE. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashim. Uh, So you're on mute, request you to unmute yourself. Yes, am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Your slide is not visible. Okay, I'll share it again. Sure, sir. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. We can see it. We can go in the presentation mode. Okay. So, respected Honorable Secretary Petroleum, Sri Tarun Kapoorji, Mr. E.S. Ranganathan, Director of Marketing, my partner, I would say, Mr. Rizal, the distinguished panelists of this session and other dignitaries who are connected in this virtual meeting online. A very warm welcome to this presentation on uh, this India 
CGD forum, of which has the website of which has been launched by Honorable Secretary a short while ago. And as was highlighted by Madam Rina, today is the era of collaboration. Rather, I would say today is the era of 3C, that is competition, cooperation and collaboration. And therefore, it is uh, opportune to launch this uh, India City Gas Distribution Forum at this point of time because that is the need of the hour. To tell you briefly about Natural Gas Society, this is uh, a society which is uh, not very old, but not very new also. It came into being uh, in early 2000, but uh, it was revived in the year 2013. Since then, it is working relentlessly to serve the cause, the common cause of city gas distribution entities in our country. And its mission is to represent the collective interest and promote and also facilitate and further sustainable growth of natural gas industry in India, of course, in the midstream and downstream sector, except ENP. NGS also has the objective to serve as a nodal point for coordination of efforts at generation and dissemination of information and technology relevant to natural gas. Because again, I would repeat that today is the era of collaboration and it is the knowledge economy because the resources, equipment, machinery, we can buy, we can buy the technology. But the knowledge and experience unless shared does, uh, does not serve the intended purpose. So therefore, this is a forum which enables the exchange of knowledge and experience within the industry. NGS also has been working on issues of common interest like uh, formulation of safety standards, the SOPs and so on. And uh, it has represented uh, in various bodies like PNGRB, uh, formulation of standards, the Bureau of Indian Standards and so on. Another important role which NGS is playing is to provide critical inputs to the policy makers on major issues which are, which are relevant to the natural gas industry and to have collaboration with similar organizations at international level. Our patron members, that is patrons of Natural Gas Society are Gale, Mahanagar Gas, Indraprasth Gas Limited, and Petronet LNG Limited. We have five primary members, and we have Adani Gas and Torrent Gas as our associate members. And we also have on board the non voting members like Think Gas, IAX, and the Tripura Natural Gas Company. Now, to share with you a few of the initiatives with regard to dissemination of knowledge and information are number one, we publish the daily news online. It is also available on the website and it is also emailed. Then there is a fortnightly snapshot, a quarterly gas statistics report you are seeing on screen, the latest uh, issue of the GSR, that is July 21 issue. And in addition to uh, these uh, periodical publication, we also come out with an annual all the industry members have come up with the special initiatives which we have been taken by NGS conduct a study on gas demand in the country. That is also from time to time. That is not time affair. The scenario itself is dynamic and therefore such studies are uh, then uh, based on the issues raised by the uh, entities in CGD sector and the concerns expressed by them, a study was also undertaken on tariffs and taxes and uh, impact of those on the industry as a whole. Hence, NGS is also uh, developing discussion papers on various relevant and current issues 
pertaining to CGD sector. And it was only recently in, in the year 1920 that the impact study of electric vehicles on CNG and LNG sales was undertaken and uh, it was uh, supported by Gale, PLL, MGL and IGL because uh, as all of us know, EVs are coming up on a, in a big way and therefore it is uh, necessary for us to understand the impact of that development on our sector. Then again with the objective of sharing the knowledge and experience within the industry, annual OINDEM conference is organized by NGS and now four con such conferences have already been organized and the fifth one will be organized shortly. In addition to this special workshop focused on safety in CGD industry has also been started uh, two years ago and this year we will be coming up with the third such workshop. About the international associations, national and international both, a few of the prominent names to mention here are the industry forums like FIFKI, PhD Chamber of Commerce, the regulator that is PNGRB, the administrative ministry, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, the Bureau of Indian Standards, PESO, uh, that is uh, CCOE Cylinder Safety Committee was formally uh, constituted in which NGS also had representation. Then we have also linkages with international bodies like uh, Asia Pacific Natural Gas Vehicles Association, ANGWA, we have Indian uh, entity ISGF as a uh, partner. We have uh, SIAM uh, connection. We are also affiliated with International Gas Union and GasX and also a part of Asian Gas Forum. Now, with this background and uh, uh, Madam Rina and others have already given you the, the, uh, about the necessity to create a joint forum between the electricity utilities and CGD sector. So let us have a look at some of the statistics with regard to power generation in India. As per the data published by the Government of India Ministry of Power, the total installed capacity is about, uh, around 3,84,000 megawatt out of which the share of thermal uh, generation is 2,34,000 megawatt and out of that gas has a contribution of only 2,4924 megawatts. That corresponds to about 6.5% of the total installed capacity. And as we all know, uh, the government of India uh, has uh, a big target of taking this share of natural gas in power generation and other sectors to the tune of 15% by the year 2030. And therefore, we feel that uh, our joint efforts with ISGF and other entities whosoever are willing to join will go a long way in achieving this uh, target by the year 2030. Now, there have been several reforms in the power distribution sector, namely the power sector uh, is being governed by the Electricity Act 2003, for which the draft amendment uh, was uh, put forth in the year 2018. Then the government has also put forward the Uday Yojana, that is Ujjwal Discoms Assurance Yojana, which encourages discoms to reduce the uh, AT and C losses to 15%. Then restructuring, accelerated power development and reforms uh, to introduce SCADA automatic meter reading for high revenue customers, prepaid meters, etc. So this is the objective of promoting these things. Now, if we come to the Indian city gas distribution sector, presently during the last financial year, the gas consumption by CGD sector was around 25 million standard cubic meters per day and it is envisaged 
that it will go up to 65 mm as CMD by the year 2030. Then the total number of authorized geographical areas is about 230 as of June 21, which is expected to jump up to 400 in the next year. That number of CNG stations is little more than 3000 as, as in March 21, which is expected to become 10,000 by the year 2030. The total number of CNG vehicles uh, as in uh, May 20, it was around 2 million, which is expected to grow to 33 million by 2030. The number of piped natural gas connections were uh, around 8 million as in December 20, which are expected to increase to 50 million by year 2030. And the total of a uh, number of districts of our country covered by CTD are 406, which are which is expected to increase to more than 740 after the 11th round of bidding. And the, in terms of coverage of poly, uh, population, it is approximately 70% at present, and it is envisaged that it will go to 100%. Uh, in the coming rounds of bidding. Just like power sector, gas sector is also undergoing reforms. Some of the prominent uh, initiatives are with regard to setting up of uh, online gas trading exchange platform for offering transparency and competitive prices of natural gas, availability of 24 by 7 trade facility, facilitation of delivery and ease of transaction to the market participants and discovery of a reasonable market price. Then second important uh, development is with regard to notification of access codes, basically with the objective of helping the new CGA, CGD entities to transport, distribute and price natural gas simplification of gas pipeline tariffs attracting investment for building new gas infrastructure and to encourage competition among suppliers in the newer cities coming under city gas distribution. The next important development is about formulation of an unified tariff structure to make fuel more affordable for the distant users and to attract investment for creation of new gas infrastructure and the latest one is about LNG dispensing. It is of course in the nascent stage, it has to go a long way, but this is also a very promising area. Now having talked about power sector and gas sector, our objective is to find the area of collaboration because whatever has been done by someone, we need not reinvent the wheel. If my friend has done some good work and if he shares with me, if my job becomes easy because I can uh, look forward and beyond what has already been done. There is no point in repeating what has already been done or to struggle with whatever has been experienced by someone. So there are certain areas in which uh, there can be a very active cooperation. For example, whether it is city gas distribution sector or electrical utility, it is very important to obtain relevant permissions from local authorities. So this is one area where the hands can be joined to facilitate the progress in a smooth manner. Then expansion of network and assets information sharing with regard to domestic and industrial connections. Then customer relationship management it looks very attractive and very sweet to speak on the PowerPoint or on the screen, but it is the most difficult task, not only for CGD business and electrical utilities, but, but for all segments of business. So one of the important areas of cooperation could be with regard to database sharing. And under that, there can be several things which can be done. For example, market opportunities can be explored by sharing with service providers 
in other domains like water, municipal agencies, renewable energy development agencies, and so on. Then, when, of course, when we do the large aggregation, it allows for better and more integration of renewables into the grid on the supply side and more effective DR tools on the demand side. Today, in the age of big data analytics, and that can be used uh, to enable both real time and non real time from remote with regard to equipment, system, etc. Similarly, we can effectively make use of AI and M2M to determine optimal energy use, lifestyle comfort, energy efficiency, etc. etc. And again, individually, uh, a particular sector may be excelling, but when we execute the projects, the interutility coordination is a very big problem. So if there is a common platform like this, then there can be a very good interutility coordination between various entities. And one of the finest examples is GIS mapping. Suppose if we have uh, all the integrated data and information uh, on GIS maps, the electrical system, the other utilities can be mapped in digital form. For example, there are uh, CNG stations, there are petrol, petrol stations are already available on Google Maps, but this is not the case with CNG stations. So if that can be mapped, it will become very easy for the end users to find. And moreover, when we are thinking of introducing CNG in a big way, if we are thinking of having more and more vehicles on CNG, then we should also enable the end users to facilitate as to find out where the CNG stations are available so that the use of CNG is promoted. Then such digital maps can be effectively used by other infrastructure service providers also for their planning as well as uh, point name of their systems. And this come this uh, these GIS maps can be very handy for planning of laying of water supply and sewage lines, telecom cables, gas pipelines, uh, steel uh, I mean CGD steel network, MDP network, etc. etc. And this kind of data which is available with the nodal agency can be shared with other stakeholders in a city for a modest fee. So this can serve as a revenue stream as well. Sorry. So with that, I would like to conclude my presentation here and yeah. we can discuss yeah. more if there are any queries or questions after the session, the panel discussion and everything is over. So thank you very much and namaste to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Devi Shastri for the theme presentation. Now I would like to request Mr. Sainath, Senior Solutions Architect Utilities from AWS India for the presentation on cloud as enabler for digital transformation in CGDs. Mr. Sainath has two decades of experience of working with customers in utilities and smart cities domain in various roles. Mr. Sainath works with public sector utilities and AWS partners to help build AWS cloud-based industry solutions. Over to you, Sainath. Mr. Sainath, you're on mute. Okay, yeah. I'm sharing my screen. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, uh, start with, as you know, many of the speakers mentioned before, there are many CGDs who have been delivering services uh, to consumers in India, and uh, many have been in existence since years. 
and uh, many have started operations recently. So all these uh, CGD entities are in different phases of uh, transformation in, you know, in terms of improving their services, delivering better services to consumers, adding more and more, you know, uh, um, uh, services to what they are already delivering. So there is a lot of transformation which is uh, uh, happening. And I'll be primarily talking about, you know, how cloud as an enabler can support the digital transformation uh, initiatives in uh, city gas distribution. So if we look at, uh, you know, the focus areas of a, a city gas distribution utility, you know, one of the primary focus is in terms of maintaining network availability and safety levels, right? In terms of, you know, monitoring, real-time monitoring of gas distribution network parameters, you know, critical uh, asset uh, monitoring of uh, the distribution pipeline or in terms of leakage detection. Maintaining this uh, network availability uh, is an important uh, focus area for utilities. Similarly, improving the operational efficiency in terms of, you know, how soon can I give a new connection to a consumer? How soon can I, you know, uh, uh, repair a faulty meter? How soon can I uh, um, address a complaint of a leakage detected by a consumer? You know, all of these actually um, are uh, some of the areas where, you know, operational efficiency needs to be increased and uh, CGDs focus on increasing these operational efficiencies. Another area is in terms of increasing consumer base and uh, in order to increase consumer base, you know, uh, improving the customer satisfaction of the existing consumer base is very important. Right? So that is another focus area, not just for CGDs per se, distribution utilities or for any service based you know, uh, utility. And uh, another area is around cost optimization, uh, be it in terms of you know demand planning or IT resource management. Uh, how or what are the areas where cost could be optimized, and at the same time, you know the service levels are still maintained. And in order to do this, you know digital transformation is what gives them the flexibility and uh, greater focus on uh, the objectives like you know reliability, safety, and security, agility, and time to market, uh, you know, or improving the customer satisfaction. And in order to do this, uh, utilities are uh, implementing various uh, solutions, right? And some of the areas, like you know, one could be consumer management, uh, where uh, you know consumer billing, which includes you know um, details of a consumer or meters installed there, or in terms of payments received, or the customer relationship management systems, or the portals or mobile apps. So these are something which uh, uh, CGD utilities implement for uh, uh, consumer management. Similarly, in terms of device management for getting the reads remotely or monitoring the critical assets, or it could be enterprise wide systems. And the last one around network operations, which could be say GIS or it could be SCADA applications. Right? And if you look at these uh, systems that CGDs implement, uh, many of these are common uh, between a distribution company and a city gas distribution company. You know, uh, some of the names which were already taken by uh, uh, previous speakers, like, you know, uh, billing applications or, you know, CRM applications, many of these are common between uh, distribution and uh, uh, electricity distribution and uh, city gas distribution. So how well can these commonly be leveraged is the, you know, uh, uh, topic uh, that we're talking today. Uh, although, you know, many of these are common, but there could be some which may not be uh, completely applicable. Like, for example, you know, gas SCADA would be different from a, a distribution SCADA, right? Or a network planning for gas distribution could be different from what we are doing in uh, electricity distribution. But largely, you know, uh, what we see is many of these applications are common between uh, um, electricity and city gas, right? And um, in, in order to uh, implement uh, these solutions, you know, some of the utilities have already done many of these, some are probably done only with uh, CRM and uh, uh, billing, but utilities are moving towards, uh, you know, enhancing their digital footprint, right? And in order to do this, uh, uh, what is more important is, or the important aspect which needs to be considered is to bring together technology and uh, business priorities. Define the business priorities and identify the technologies which are needed to bring in that digital transformation. And how do we bring in this digital transformation is in terms of say modernization, it could be you know, building insights or it could be you know, around uh, innovation. And at the same time, uh, doing all this will need organizational alignment. If we go ahead with you know technology without really prioritizing business uh, um, aspects, you know it would not bring the results that we would want, right? At the same time, if there is no organizational alignment towards technology implementation or uh, uh, business changes, it would still not give the business results that we want. 
right? So bringing these two together is important to deliver those business results. And what are the business results we are talking about? Uh, could be you know superior consumer experience, which will be much beyond uh, web portals or mobile applications, right? And at the same time, you know, flexible IT infrastructure, what kind of flexible IT infrastructure would uh, the utilities have? So when we're talking about a common uh, infrastructure between a distribution company and a city gas distribution company, uh, what is the level of uh, uh, flexibility which is there in the IT infrastructure? If I use the same billing system, can it scale up to handle both uh, electricity billing and gas billing? Okay. Or if for a... Uh, for example, I take it, you know, as a utility, I take a decision that, you know, I want to bill all consumers on the same day instead of billing them in multiple cycles, right? Is the IT infrastructure flexible enough to handle that kind of changes? At the same time, you know, adaptive business models, like, for example, you know, many, uh, there are CGDs which have presence in multiple cities and they have plans to expand to, uh, uh, many of them have plans to expand to more cities. So how well they can, uh, you know, uh, use these existing solutions, which could be common between DISCOM and CGD or running by CGD alone could be expanded to additional areas. How easy is it to replicate these solutions to new areas? And uh, another important aspect around security, how secure is the data when we talk about, uh, um, you know, uh, having common systems between the distribution utility and the gas utility, uh, what is the level of security measures that need to be taken? What data of a distribution, electricity distribution company is available to a CGD or what data of CGD is available to a distribution company? At the same time, within the utility, you know, who can see uh, what amount of data, who can change, uh, you know, uh, who can do say kind of an example of uh, bill correction or who could do a reading correction. So such kind of security aspects are something which, uh, um, you know, have to be uh, achieved when we talk about uh, digital transformation. Right? And, uh, and some of the reasons why many customers are moving towards cloud are considering the aspects that we spoke about in the previous slide. One reason is, uh, you know, moving from idea to implementation is drastically reduced when we talk about a typical on-premise data center kind of an implementation to a cloud-based implementation. Right? Say, for example, you have uh, uh, data with, say, uh, SCADA and billing um, in your applications, and you want to run analytics on top of this data combined together. Right? If we talk about a, a traditional data center on-premise implementation, it would take at least months to get started uh, to really understand how do we run this uh, analytics. But when we move towards cloud, uh, this could actually reduce to a few hours or probably a day or two. So that is the drastic change which comes when uh, you know many customers move from say on-premise to uh, uh, a cloud-based implementation. Another uh, point why many customers are moving towards cloud is uh, in terms of you know the uh, capital expenditure that needs to be done in the case of a uh, you know, on-premise implementation. If if we talk about say setting up the same analytics application, you know, you again buy large servers, you buy you know the network equipment, you take a few weeks or months to get the infrastructure, you set it up, uh, and you spend good amount of capital expenditure for that, right? But when we move towards cloud, uh, uh, these are more around you know uh, pay as you go model, so that so the capital expenditure is very much avoided in the case of cloud. So these are some of the reasons many customers are moving towards cloud, and in the case of uh, CGDs also, uh, when they want to innovate, you know, bring in new insights on top of the data that they already have, uh, using the cloud-based services is something which will be very beneficial for them. And if we talk about you know, some of the areas of cloud adoption in uh, city gas distribution, you know, consumer experience is uh, uh, one of the areas, and you know, uh, these are different uh, touch points that consumers are expecting uh, if, even today. Right? Excuse me. Uh, expecting to like, for example, you know, contact center or a call center is something which is available uh, in all utilities, be it a, a CGD or a distribution company. But this could again be a common one where you know CGDs are still being established and want to run a call center, right? And similarly, you know, web portals and mobile applications. These are something which distribution companies have. Uh, uh, you know, already given as part of say RAP, DRP or you know many announcements uh, done after that, and uh, consumers can uh, very well have the same web portals and mobile applications to view their say gas-based uh, uh, consumption, gas bills, etc. 
Right? But one step forward is not just viewing the bills that are uh, uh, being generated for the consumers, but in terms of uh, uh, you know how uh, uh, many distribution uh, history distribution utilities are giving a view of what could be the estimated bill for the month. Right. Similarly, you know, CGDs can also give a similar view in uh, the web portals that you know this could be the estimated consumption for the month, estimated consumption, uh, estimated bill for the uh, month. So such kind of uh, uh, additional features are something which can be given in the same portals, uh, be it for electricity or gas distribution. Right. Similarly, connected homes, it could be you know uh, more around say um, home automation for uh, electricity distribution, but in the case of gas, it could be more around you know safety aspects. Uh, have a, a gas leakage sensors in the house installed, and if a gas leakage is detected, it can send signals to the command center in a city gas distribution. Right? So, which means that you know uh, uh, the utility will know well in advance, even before someone calls up and says that you know something bad has happened, or you know uh, even before uh, a customer raises a complaint. So, these are some of the aspects which will actually improve consumer experience uh, in CGTs. Uh, and in the similar areas, you know, uh, in order to improve consumer experience, uh, some of the uh, aspects that can be taken up is like, for example, you know, how would CGT know uh, what is the consumer's perception of how their services are? Right? So that could be done uh, using natural language processing. So it could be analyzing the emails that customer has sent or some feedback customer has given on the website. So this can be analyzed uh, uh, to identify what is the kind of sentiment which lies in the consumers about the CGT. And all these kind of services can be something which can be delivered using cloud. Another good example could be, you know, integrating Alexa with your organization, uh, which could be like, you know, instead of a consumer opening a portal or a mobile app to know what the bill amount is, they can probably say, Alexa, what is my, you know, gas bill amount, right? Or what is my gas, is my gas bill due? Or when is my electricity bill due? So this is the kind of uh, integration that can be done uh, by using, you know, cloud-based services, be it for a you know, distribution company or a, a city gas distribution company. Right. And another area uh, uh, which we spoke about in terms of you know bringing in the digital transformation is the uh, area of uh, insights. So how well do we analyze the data uh, which is available within uh, uh, city gas distribution or some of the data which can be made available from uh, electricity distribution to CGD utilities? So using all this data, uh, you know, uh, build up data lake which can have structured, unstructured kind of a data and build different kinds of analytics use cases. And some of them could be around, you know, organizational KPIs. What is my average revenue realization? What is my cost to serve? Or it could be, you know, um, uh, demand planning, or it could be, you know, fraud detection in terms of, uh, uh, say, comparing the consumption between energy versus, you know, gas, right? I mean, there, probably there is usage of energy, but there is no usage of gas, or there is a mismatch between these two. Such kind of cross analytics are something which can be built uh, when we're talking about a common data lake, which will have data from, say, CGD, uh, applications as well as some amount of data from uh, electricity distribution companies. And there could be more uh, use cases when we talk about advanced analytics using machine learning. It could be around, you know, say personalization uh, in terms of sending reminders to customers, or it could be, you know, advertisements to customers, or it could be around fraud detection uh, examples that I just gave. Uh, different areas where, you know, machine learning can be applied uh, uh, to enhance the operations. Right. And uh, a few use cases that I do try to uh, put down in terms of, you know, how the data between electricity distribution and uh, CGD utilities can be cross uh, leveraged. Uh, so one could be like, you know, a potential consumer comes to a CGD utility and applies for a new connection request. Right? And a CGD utility could uh, request for some amount of data from the electricity distribution company to know, you know, what is the kind of payment pattern of this particular consumer. Is he a good paying customer? Is he a bad paying customer? So based on that, you know, CGD utility can actually uh, uh, say send more reminders for, you know, uh, bill payment or some other mechanisms can be put in place. Right? Another example could be uh, the uh, data which is available within electricity distribution uh, can be used by CGT to identify potential consumers. It can be uh, based on consumer profiling, it could be based on load or the average monthly usage. Use this and then uh, use for campaigning to build or expand the consumer base. Similarly, you know, other use cases that I mentioned around, you know, say, uh, 
uh, fraud detection can be another area or, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, expansion of uh, additional services can be another area. So there could be many more uh, use cases, but this is, uh, I just try to give uh, two examples of what could be uh, the level of uh, operational efficiency improvement when uh, uh, there is uh, no common infrastructure between uh, CGD and uh, distribution uh, company. That is it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sainat, for presentation on such useful technology solution. We are now about to start with a panel discussion. Joining the panel, we have Mr. Rajiv Sik, Chief Executive Officer, Indian Oil Adani Gas Limited, with more than 35 years, 31 years of uh, with with more than 31 years, Mr. Rajiv Sikha has worked across multiple regions of India with Bharat Petroleum Corporation. Corporation Limited and has delivered an enormous increase in the sales of oil, gas, as well as lubricant products. Welcome, sir. We have Ms. Anjali Chandra, member of PERC. Ma'am has over 40 years of rich experience in power sector in multiple domains. She has wide exposure with hands on experience in the field as well as planning and design and regulation. Welcome, ma'am. We have Mr. Sanjay Banga, President TND, Tata Power Company Limited. Sir has 27 years of experience in power generation and distribution. He brings with him an extensive learning in generation and distribution operations, selection and deployment of automation technologies for strengthening of electricity utility. Warm welcome, sir. We have Mr. Anil Rawal, MD and CEO in Telesmart. Mr. Rawal has 23 years of experience across both corporate and governmental organizations. He has been involved in the evolution of the public-private partnership framework for infrastructure development program project. Welcome, sir. We have Mr. Rajendra Cholan, Managing Director, Best Coast. He has served the state government in various capacities, such as Assistant Commissioner in Haveri District and Chief Executive Officer in Kola District and various other roles. Welcome, sir. We have Mr. Sanjay Shendil. Deputy Managing Director, Mahanagar Gas Limited. Mr. Sanjay Shinde has almost three decades of experience in B2B sales, exports, and marketing. Welcome, sir. We have Mr. Sujit Roikar, General Manager of Marketing at MGL. Mr. Sajid Roikar has over 24 years of rich experience in city gas distribution business with various key competencies and skills. Warm welcome, sir. We have Ms. Deepthi Dutt, Head of Strategic Initiatives, Public Sector, AWS India. With over 21 years of work experience, Deepthi is focusing on strategic initiatives for India public sector. Her current focus areas are smart infrastructure, digital agriculture, government startup program. Welcome, sir. With this, I would like to request Mr. Reggie Pillay to moderate the session. Good afternoon. Uh, we are running in almost uh, 25 minutes behind schedule, but uh, that is not going to be a constraint. We will have enough time to discuss everything uh, because after the session, there is no other session plan. Like in uh, physical conferences, we have to vacate the room. No problem. We can continue. So some of our webinar with uh, at times with two hour webinar run into three hour and people are still there and some of the participants from eastern side from australia from japan and all that they continue with us so no pressure a, a, a very key point uh cover uh, the previous presentations and uh, discussions we all understand that what we are trying to achieve here there's an echo uh, Ashima, can you mute your machine on? Hello? Yeah, it's, it's better now. Uh, no, still there is an echo. Ashima, all, all, all the machines in our office, uh, please tell them to mute. Okay, sir. Or anybody else uh, with the two devices who are connected, uh, please mute uh, both the devices or switch out. Uh, um, log out from one of the displays. Yeah, now it's okay. I don't, there's no echo. So uh, we had the era of uh, it in one utility, different domains, uh, or everything is in silos. What is done in customer service doesn't get into the operational side, it doesn't get into uh, some of the other aspects. Everything was in silos. So in the 10 years, 15 years ago, when we started talking about uh, smart utilities, we started application integration brought in middleware and everything 
working as one utility. Now we are graduating the era of multiple utilities, one common IT backend system from where all utilities can be managed, at least from the customer perspective, as far as from the, uh, the, the complete IT customer interface part of it. This is possible with today's technology and it will drastically reduce the, uh, the cost of business for each of the domain owners and bring much more convenience and customer delay. One click, one bill payment for electricity, water, gas, and even the house tax once in a year or whatever time frame, city to city. So all these are possible and we should be able to do that uh, very soon. Uh, this idea, we've been talking about it for a couple of years and uh, with uh, IGL and data power, as Mr. Ranganathan had mentioned earlier, we had started a common bill uh, initiative in two uh, residential colonies in West Delhi and that is going on well for the last two years and we uh, wanted to present that uh, results to the regulators in both gas side as well as in the uh, electricity side. We had invited several more regulators who are actually the policy makers uh, and uh, who need to push this thing, new ideas to the utilities. And, uh, unfortunately, because of the second wave, uh, like there's only one PNGRB for the NDR regulation in the gas sector. We have every state has its own state electricity regulatory commission. And every year in March, uh, typically in March and some of the states may slip into April, but definitely by middle of April, they all issue, every year been issuing a tariff order. What should be the tariff for the financial year, say from April to April 2021 to March 2022. Unfortunately, because of the second wave of the pandemic and many people being affected all across the country, um, most of our uh, uh, regulatory commissions could not complete the tariff order. And as a result, so many of the important people whom we invited today could not join. Uh, but we are very happy that we are one of the most experienced regulator here and Madam Anjali Chandra. So uh, before uh, getting into the details, I will invite uh, Mr. Sika has expressed the desire to speak first because he has other pressing engagement. I will request Mr. Sika to give his uh, opening speech and thereafter we'll come to you, uh, Madam Anjali Chandra. Yeah. So over to you, Mr. Sika. You can unmute and speak. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, distinguished panel members and the organizers, Mr. Pele and entire team. Uh, it's a delight to be with you all. At the end of the day, it's more about what we can do and what we can learn. Uh, I would like to begin with first, the utilities has to have to start thinking alike actually that we are there we are there together and we can do a lot of things together which will be good for the customers that thought process itself has not been i would say not been really uh, thought of or people have not uh, given enough uh, if i may use the word justice to it or uh, the the, the leadership has not really dwelled on this kind of aspects. Now, when you think from customer uh, experience or consumer experience, there are a lot of things which can be done. It can be made better through our, uh, I would say, synergy, whether it's the collective bill reading or the same meter reading when he goes, same meter reader when he goes to the house only once, uh, once in a month or twice a month. And, uh, and a lot of things can happen based on the analytics of the customer. If data is available with Tata Power or Adani Power and my team or a gas team goes to collect the bill, we know about the customers, we know about his habits, we know whether he's a bad payment master or he's a he makes payment properly or he, he uses Paytm or whatever, or he gives checks, he is still, in, uh, he's still not e-savvy. So, lot of collective learning and ultimately 
customer insights can be collected, which will help us in servicing the customers more. And at the end of the day, if the customer is happy, yes, customer has to pay utilities, utilities, whether it's power, and I'm giving it to power right now, though it can be water, it can be any energy, it can be sewage, it can be sewage, it can be waste disposal. And of course, it is uh, gas, which is my industry. So, can we think of customer totality? And ultimately, we have to move beyond uh, what I would say the uh, standalone kind of utility experience for the customer. So, what I, what I believe and uh, uh, to uh, what is my firm, let us all take small, small baby steps together. Let us reach out to customers and make our policies or energy energize ourselves in a way to get, uh, bring us uh, uh, think uh, think alike, so that at the end of the day, customer is happy and the companies, utility companies, whether it's electrical company or whether it's a gas uh, infrastructure company and uh, like us. We get operational efficiency and we also get cross leadership, which will help the customers in getting known. At the end of the day, it's all about that. Can we think alike? So that's my initial take. What are the ways? How can we do it? These are uh, the challenges. Whether it's safe for the uh, whether it's uh, safe for the customers. If we talk of electrical meters, if we talk of gas meters, so a lot of things can be done. So this is my initial take, Mr. Pillay. Thank you. You are on mute, You're Mr. Pillay. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, I, I have the pressure of thank you very much, Mr. Sikra, and uh, I have the pressure of inviting Madam Anjali Chandra. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, the esteemed speakers, co-panelists, and the participants. At the outset, I would like to thank Mr. Pillay and ISGF for inviting me to share my views. Uh, and uh, thanks very much. So, with this target of 15% by 2030 to a gas, 15% uh, of gas-based economy by 2030, we are likely to have uh, electricity and gas in every household. So it is the right time for electricity, gas, and maybe water also to collaborate. And uh, as everyone has said, there are a lot of synergies in both the sectors and uh, maybe also in water sector, a lot of sharing of data, GIS maps, metering, billing, collection, everything can be shared by all the mm, uh, sectors and cost brought down. From a regulatory point of view, I would like to say that we would be very happy if costs are shared. You know, the primary aim of a regulator, whether in the electricity sector or in the gas sector or in the water sector, is that costs to the customer should be affordable and customer convenience should be there and he should be happy with the customer service. So anything which improves all these three, affordability, service, and uh, you know convenience, we would be very happy to go, go along with it. From a regulatory point of view, yes, uh, you know, this will bring down costs, but in the, you know, with seamless sharing of information, <laughs> it will uh, naturally bring down costs. It will be less intrusive on the customer if you know one meter reader goes or if smart metering is there and one reading gets all the data for all the three sectors or four sectors and uh, you know costs will come down so it will become more affordable uh, but we will then have to have you know cross sectoral regulators or uh, determine how the costs will be shared you know that will be our role with how these costs will be shared between all these sectors and how it will, uh, you know, uh, how these sectors will be managed. Uh, how will the cyber security work out with three sectors working together? So for the, all those, we would be requiring regulations 
and the uh, regulators in all these three sectors or four sectors would have to work together to work out a common framework. The beginning is uh, has been made today, and I'm sure that with the uh, future discussions, we will be able to work out how these sectors will work uh, together. Uh, you know, there are many opportunities and uh, uh, with the EV charging, for example, uh, maybe EV charging could be at the CNG stations. Uh, that could bring about a cost sharing. We could have, you know, GIS maps and like digging. Uh, I When I was working in DERC, I found that you know, digging of roads is a big issue in Delhi. So, if both pipelines for uh, gas and the uh, underground cables are laid together, it leads to this lesser of disruption, and they all they do not damage each other because digging for one would may inadvertently result in damage to the uh, cables of the other or pipes of the other. So that uh, can also be avoided with common GIS maps. It would be, you know, like a, we are thinking of smart cities. Smart cities means something where there is sharing of information, where all things can be done together. So this sharing of gas and electricity is very exciting and very promising, I would say. Uh, and I would really like to thank ISGA for taking this initiative and uh, we look forward to uh, how to provide uh, good customer experience. You know, I am also excited about maybe if all three bills or four bills are together, the customer may not like to default because if, uh, he doesn't, <laughs> you know, if he defaults on one, then all the three or four go off and his life is uh, very difficult. So I am, uh, as a regulator, we want uh, customers to pay up maybe at reduced costs of course, but I would find that very interesting uh, from a regulator's point of view that all customers will start paying, and especially with the digitalized billing of all sectors together, it may result in great uh, in, uh, you know, uh, revenue for the discom. We all hear that discoms are starved of revenue, but if all this is done together, maybe revenue stream for the discoms will improve through digitalization and smart metering. And we could also, I do not know, and Telesmart is also there and other meter, metering, if all three or four meters can put into, uh, can be put into one console and, you know, have one communication system for all the, uh, all the metering, uh, so that communication costs come down. Usually we find that communication costs are very high uh, for the meter reading and billing. And there are uh, gaps in the communication. So that could be one idea which could be generated. And uh, I really look, look forward to this collaboration. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for the encouraging words, madam. And um, this is exactly one of the main things which we have been advocating is that uh, uh, the common sharing of resources, particularly the digital assets, as much as possible between different domain operators. And uh, gas companies, uh, the CGD companies are all come from uh, Gale, ONGC, Indian Oil, all this oil uh, and gas sector companies. They have been traditionally using technology and they understand the value of technology. So we wanted to make a beginning with the mm -hmm. gas and later move on to water. Water is managed by municipalities in each town. It is very difficult to uh, get them on board. But once we start in a city where electricity and gas are uh, sharing their resources, then with that example, it will be easy to attract them. So uh, I will now invite um, uh, Mr. Anil Ravel to make a small presentation on what IndeliSmart is proposing as a common backend, which uh, you also mentioned and uh, our secretaries are also mentioned. Then I'll come to you, Sanjay. Eh? Uh, over to you, Anil. Yeah, uh, so thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Ajay. And, uh, Thanks a lot, lot to ISGA for uh, giving me the opportunity to really speak in this esteemed panel. Hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, we yes. can. Okay. Th thanks a lot. So I'll, I'll try and share a one one uh, uh, presentation which actually talks about why smart metering in electricity, what exactly smart metering has done to electricity, and what could more be done, and why it is very natural 
that gas sector must also pick up and why this collaboration and how the collaboration can happen the how part is more important how the collaboration can happen is some of the and how it will be synergistic and cost effective so these are the few themes which i would like to share and i'll i'll, I'll try and share one one presentation please just one second You can share your screen. You have the right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully, it's visible now. Yeah. You can go yeah. presentation. I mean, presentation mode, full screen. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Right. Great. Uh, thanks. So, uh, yeah. So, first part um, why we are looking at such a buzz in electricity on smart metering. Uh, actually, in power sector, if you ask me if one thing which is happening, the biggest thing in the country currently, uh, we have seen generation buzzing, transmission buzzing, and currently it's all about distribution sector. Within distribution sector, it's all about network improvement as well as the reduction of billing and collection efficiencies. And billing and collection efficiency has a clear path and the guidelines set up, which actually is about smart metering. So we are talking about in the country at the, at the 250 million smart metering to be done in next uh, few years. And why that has happened is very simple because there has been already an experiment running on BOT model, which is build, operate, uh, own, operate, and transfer model kind of public-private partnership, where utilities are not asked to invest upfront because, frankly, they don't uh, have the financial efficiency to that extent that they can invest such large number into the smart metering. So. A PPP model where some investor invests and uh, uh, implements, operates, and maintains, and then charges the utility when actual savings are happening. And that's the experiment that has happened. So, ESL, you know, Energy Efficiency Services Limited, has been having about 8 million orders of smart metering in six states. And out of that, about 1.7 uh, uh, million have been implemented. And out of that 1.7 million, let me tell you what, I don't know, 30% uh, uh, has got done in last one year of COVID, uh, despite all the situation we have seen. Our analysis on those meters shows that uh, when you combine domestic and non-domestic consumer together, the you would see before and after numbers of uh, revenue improvement uh, in terms of uh, these uh, utilities. Uh, uh, this is this is a uh, reasonable improvement in their revenue starting from 6% to about 41% uh, in different utilities and that amounts to about 225 rupees on an average uh, per meter per month kind of revenue improvement and in this model as I said that uh, some investor invests and charges only when the meters are commissioned uh, that the charge service charges have been about 75 rupees to 110 rupees depending on the utility to utility so this is Basically, a service model where you invest and charge, and that has done really wonders to the extent of the areas where smart metering has been done. There are various examples which have shown up that if you see the bottom line at the Bihar part, where, where we are doing all prepaid metering in March, April 21, I'm talking about the recent most revenue, revenue collection in Bihar discount increased by 12% in smart metering areas. Whereas it came down by 30% more smart metering areas. It's natural. It was the COVID time, collection could not happen. Uh, there were most of the meters were not read. Aver average billing was done. There's all these things. And there was there was really a serious situation for uh, meter readers to go and collect the reading and uh, um, uh, prepare the bills, while smart meters don't need any, any of these things. So there was natural increase and there was a uh, reduction in revenue for the non-smart metering areas. In previous COVID times, uh, last first wave in Bihar, there was 50,000 meters, about 50,000 meters, and there was about INR 5 lakh uh, per day kind of revenue which was coming to those smart metering areas. So people charged as they needed, 20 rupees. We charged, we, we saw the uh, prepaid charging of 20 rupees, 25 rupees, 30 rupees. It means you charge as much money you have. So that was the example, and you know that what has it has done to Bihar. Bihar government has committed itself to the complete smart metering in Bihar, and you would see this news flowing around in all the newspapers last some time because they have seen the gain which they made in the first COVID wave and the second COVID wave. Uh, a bit about Intelli Smart. Uh, so first, first I, I just wanted to know why there's so much a buzz about smart metering in the electricity sector. Where I would personally believe, you know, uh, uh, that in a way, electricity sector has done really well in picking this wave uh, of smart metering early, and uh, 
that actually led to the uh, the thought and idea of IntelliSmart. Uh, ultimately, we know that um, uh, utilities may not have the really the funds to fund this kind of um, expense uh, upfront, and somebody is required to fund, it, uh, build, operate, maintain, and then at zero cost transfer after certain uh, period of operations, and that required uh, a entity which could do it, and that's what IntelliSmart uh, has born from. ESL, you know, is Energy Efficiency Services Limited, which actually owns 49% IntelliSmart. And I have owns 51%, and that's where the two companies have come together to give, give uh, IP, IIPL, or uh, in, uh, uh, the way we call it, uh, IntelliSmart Infra Private Limited, a company which is focused on smart metering in the country, in BOT model particularly. Right, and uh, and uh, DEA Ministry of Finance has been kind enough to write about us and to the utilities uh, what we are doing and why why OPEX model we call it BOT model or OPEX model pay as you say model whatever name you want to name it is very efficient way of uh, saving the revenue giving better services to the consumer as well as improve the financial and operation efficiencies. So currently we are operating in six states out uh, there are 8 million order book as I said uh, about 17 lakh have been implemented these states are Rajasthan, uh, UP, Bihar, Delhi, Andaman and you know uh, these are these are the few states NDMC we have completed uh, these are the few states where we are operating currently. What value we are, we are creating uh, we have this is a I would say first ever company in the country which has all the skill set which has been brought together under one roof to really implement this large scale program with the safety security and cyber security parts built in targeting the SLAs you know I can say with lots of pride that UP which is having about uh, 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 more than million meters now working there uh, and uh, the SLA which we are meeting is more than 98 percent at GPRS. GPRS is a, one of the cheapest and most secure communication technology you can imagine for smart metering. So we are meeting the SLA. So all this can be done only when you have the technology manpower and process in place and that can be stitched together to form a program and that's what IntelliSmart is doing. We, we are running at, I don't know, some of the programs which are futuristic for example advanced analytics we have run. We are trying and doing big data analytics and you know AI ML uh, efforts we are doing. The how, how we can add value to the uh, revenue part of the uh, uh, utilities. All these experiments we are doing in IntelliSmart and we are focused organization to really run the smart metering in this country to the extent you know we can. How we how is the business model? Uh, that's very important. The way it's operating in power sector I would like to bring out here. Uh, so there are smart meters which actually communicate on they can communicate on any other technologies. It could be cellular, it could be RF, it could be PLC. Mostly what uh, we have chosen is cellular and to be supplemented by RF because it's most secure, uh, most cost effective and solid uh, uh, robust technology for communication. So uh, on GPRS we communicate our meters to the head end system which is basically cloud based service and from head end system we uh, data is taken to MDMS which is meter data management system where the data is churned and the, the, the data is given to billing system for generation of the bills. In between, you know, there's there's link of mobile app which goes to the consumer, where they can really see see through their consumption patterns, their bill, they can pay the bill, and it's really wonderful to see that mobile app how it operates. It gives the it gives the various data inputs to the consumer. So those are the some of the uh, the program parts we we run. So up to mobile app is our scope and billing system are our distribution company because the tariff is in their hand. They generate the bills. So, uh, and as I said, it's build on operate and transfer model where we have the built up phase of two years. In two years, we largely target to uh, implement all the smart meters on the ground and then operate and maintain them for six years. That's the kind of contracts we have. And so once we have uh, you know, implemented the program on the ground, uh, the, all the meters are commissioned, we start charging the uh, distribution company and that the charge continues on the monthly service charges for whatever six years and the assets are transferred free of cost on the zero cost to the uh, distribution company, the utility. And so the, and there's a handholding and training period in between so that uh, so that the utility can run the program on its own. And in case they want to really extend our services, there is a provision for that also. That's the, largely the broader contours of the model. Coming to gas, uh, has it been implemented in gas? Not. Do we propose? Yes. We have done detailed analysis on the gas sector uh, frankly, this idea got triggered in Ministry of Finance in one of my meetings. 
it was it came from education secretary uh, he said if you are doing uh, if you are doing so much of it in the electricity sector why not gas why you should not have uh, the, the collaborative effort in gas you have a back end your digital back end ultimately digital back end is the core of the program in smart metering digital back end is all about virtual machines being added you can scale up why don't you have the gas metering also onboarded on the same digital backend? That's where we started working. We uh, we had one consultant who worked with us quite deep, uh, who had really good exposure on the gas sector. We hired some of the resources. We did the analysis that whether there's a value, unless there's a value, uh, there's no point pitching in, uh, you know, uh, you, if we can not improve the existing system, there's no point pitching in. And that's what we did. And we found out a few of the things. And obviously, this is the best forum to know about gas and I stand corrected where I am wrong and I, I would be really pleased to know any change in the data. We have some data. So this data is all known that we are going to probably reaching uh, five, uh, no, four crore consumers in PNG. So it's, we are going to really, uh, I think gas is buzzing a lot nowadays and there's lots of, uh, uh, I would say, drive from government also to get the PNG in shape and you know, all uh, consumer to be connected. So I, I look at very upsteep kind of requirement for PNG uh, uh, rollout. Uh, with that, what we found that in PNG substation, uh, you know, losses are about 7 to 8 percent. And these losses cover all the gas losses, all the, uh, uh, and uh, the, the domestic level, it's about 5 to 6 percent meters not being read, meters being defective, they are not being operated and maintained well, meter readers are not available, uh, they are not visiting. So all these things cause revenue loss of 5 to 6 percent. And there's industry loss of 1.5 to 2 percent. So there are losses which are actually causing, in addition to that, there are the probably improvement in services required, probably uh, more consumer services are required, probably data analytics is required. So all these things are, are there. And if you can do it through smart metering, you probably don't need the meter reader. You have the, uh, you know, you don't have the working capital things uh, coming in the way. And all those savings, frankly, are not you know, accounted. It's only the losses I have accounted for. What I have, what we have done analysis and you know, what it shows is that there could be, if as the system exists and the meter or uh, uh, PNG connections really increase to four crore, uh, as they have been projected, there could be uh, on the business as usual situation, there could be loss of about 14,000 crore in the system. And if you probably invest some amount of money in smart metering, they could be saving of 10 to 12,000 crore rupees of saving in the, in the same system. So at the end of the day, as in the electricity sector, we found there's a huge value creation in case of smart metering in the gas sector also. And it could be one of the highest ROE projects in the country if we really launch it. So that's our analysis. And I'm sure there could be even better data uh, with the with the with the panelists and the and the audience. But then uh, that's what we could find out. Coming to what this gives to consumer uh, and to utilities is massive uh, in terms of real time information, uh, consumption patterns, multiple tariffs can be implemented directly. You can have uniform tariffs. You can implement time of the day tariff. Uh, you can have higher consumer satisfaction to do error free bills. Your disputes would go down. In, this is in addition to the reduction of the losses and the revenue gain I'm talking about. Zero manual intervention. You don't, don't need bill readers. Uh, this will be real time data available for building. Uh, the consumers would have a mobile app. They can see their consumption. They can they can pay the bill on the online and all these things can happen. And prepaid mode. In Bihar, we have all prepaid mode. They charge as much as they need. They don't charge when they don't need. And uh, this could really enable the poorest of the poor in using the gas. And that's what the dream of the country is to have as many consumers as possible. So these are various benefits. In addition, I have not counted for GIS, which has been mentioned. I have not counted for data analytics and various other things which have been mentioned because GIS is the base of uh, consumer indexing in smart metering. So you have to have a thorough consumer indexing and that could be GIS based. You can have network management. You can operate your network. You can uh, maintain on the GIS. So all these things are possible in case of smart metering projects uh, if, you, if one installs. Coming to the other thing, why collaboration? I know that's, um, and uh, rather more than why, how? What I would believe our dream could be having one bill for water, for gas, for electricity. Why these three? I Means you, you can have one bill for uh, uh, one bill, one bill for broadband also. You can provide your telecom services through the same. Same. Why to have so many entries into home? I feel entry into home is privacy being, you know, uh, uh, if not compromised, then at least being disturbed. You should disturb at the least. Number one, you should not be regularly disturbing. Why should you be visiting every month to the home for three times? One for gas, one for water, one for electricity, or one for broadband. 
you should not be visiting it should be visit free one event that you install the meter rest all is on cloud rest all is on the uh, on the services which are being provided digitally that for that what you need the first point of collaboration is the large scale backend ultimately metering in smart metering is a one time event it is it is not a daily or regular monthly event you have once disturbed the consumer and that's all after that it's all about digital services core of the strength lies in the digital side so you should have one backend which actually caters to the electricity can cater for gas can cater for water and can cater for broadband also going forward so that's what we are setting up intel smart has taken the target of setting up a large scale backend for at least electricity which can onboard gas also as much as wanted because at the end of the day backends are all about virtual machines uh, this is this is a sample which i am showing uh, you can add as many virtual machines if you have a scalable reliable uh, modular uh, scheme of things where you can have the front end where you have the uh, all the applications lying which can be downloaded into various clouds it could i have shown the state clouds here they could be utility clouds you can provide independent cloud services to the different utilities but at the back end there will be one source of data which could be picking data churning data doing the analytics and having the security cyber security put in place all these things are possible we have already launched a bit bit has been received so we are processing that we are launching a large back end and aim is exactly what we discussed how to collaborate on various utilities going forward and that's all uh, so uh, to conclude that uh, uh, i would fully agree that having smart metering for gas water electricity is the best option for the country most synergistic and most cost saving opex model the best model nobody need to invest this reasonably large amount of savings which will emerge out of the program which will cater for itself and it's it has to be futuristic in terms of data analytics ai ml obviously that's the future of the story and regulatory enablement as being spoken earlier is required to ensure that all the services run smooth and uh, that's all thanks a lot for giving me time thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh, anil uh, in the previous program of uh, ministry of power rfdrp uh, there was a feeder metering amr uh, or, or automated meter reading for the uh, feeders which was about uh, uh, less than 2 lakhs all across the country but each each distribution company had some 30000 1 lakh uh, something so it was very difficult we have seen how the scoms were struggling to do this amr so we were convinced that ami or smart metering will be very difficult for them even to select technology and maintain it more than that first you don't know what to buy and even if you buy the right thing you 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 won't have in-house capability to maintain that so isgf in 2017 came out with a white paper which said metering smart metering as a service against a monthly fee a, a company a capable company will come forward and they will invest they will install smart meter they will maintain it for 10 years and against a monthly fee and that is the model which ESL launched in 2018 and now for the 250 million smart meter uh, program of Ministry of Power exactly same business model has been selected. So uh, this is can be extended now as uh, Anila uh, has explained to gas to water to every other uh, segment uh, into a true smart city uh, uh, perspective. And one experiment which has been done is in Delhi and I will now have invite Sanjay Banga, President of Tata Power uh, Company Limited, previously in his role as uh, uh, Managing Director and CEO of EPDDL, Tata Power Delhi Distribution, he is uh, personally aware of this experiment which has been done in Delhi. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Reggie. Uh, very good afternoon and uh, good evening rather to all my co-panelists also. Uh, we, we serve power in Mumbai, Delhi, Ajmer, and now started in Odisha. Few, few years back in Delhi, we realized that it's not the electricity distribution we do. Actually, our core competency is how we handle consumers. So we are actually not providing electricity, but we are actually providing essential services to consumer. And if we see now world over, what you have mentioned as the theme for today is actually combined. So we, when, when, when I remember when I visited Pacific Gas and Electric, Baltimore Gas and Electric. In fact, uh, very soon you will have a kind of 
forum where the water and electricity would be, why they should not be clubbed also. So we have uh, Diva, the way electricity and water. So basically it's all essential services and the competency of utility is that how they are serving essential services, whether it's electrical or it's a gas or it's water. Once the utility has acknowledged his, his core competency is essential services, then, then it doesn't matter whether it's electricity, it's a gas or it's a water, which he is serving to customer. It definitely adds value. It's uh, in, in Indian present context, if you see, it adds value to uh, gas agencies who have got, got license because they, they are not having good, very good customer experience, the value will, uh, they create for customers. For distribution utility, they have the entire infrastructure, they have entire resources which are available, which are doing more or less same kind of a job, except gas, they are making electrons flow. They have infrastructure to say survey zone or division like that. They have a call center, they have a customer care center, they have a billing application, they have a SCADA system which will now control. Entire technology landscape is same for electricity and gas. And for DISCOM, it is more required because if we club these two services, the OPEX of distribution utility will come down. And once the OPEX comes down, and if I use the wise what Sainath has said, the consumption data of gas and consumption data of electrical with good data analytics. In fact, I can reduce losses also in DISCOM. So for DISCOM, it's a very good proposal. Like their OPEX can come down and also their ATNC losses can come down with good data analytics and that can help to reduce tariff, which is very important for in present scenario. For gas distribution companies, DISCOMs can help to reduce their capex because they have an entire consumer profile who pays how much bill, which consumer can be a consumer for a gas agents also. So they can optimize the capex that, uh, capex that the which area the first they should lay gas pipeline. And they can also definitely help in the reduction of the entire OPEX because the entire o &M part can be taken care by distribution utility uh, o &M team itself. So it's, it's a very good win-win situation for both distribution utility also for gas company also. Technologies are same, resources can be multi-skilled, employees can be in better way engaged, the entire infrastructure of DISCOM can be used, which can give him other income and can help to, to reduce tariff also. The point is, uh, we did it in Delhi because we, we realized that we our core competency is serving customer. So we went to IGL, we went explained this concept. IGL loved this concept. They said, why not we start as a pilot? So we started it, now the meter reading for gas and as well as for electricity is done jointly in our two divisions. We in fact have given them around 70,000 new consumers in our in Ajmer area. We added around 40,000 customers in IGL area and we gave them that this, these consumers you, you should access, you can. So their market share or our market knowledge is actually giving good benefit to IGL. Going forward, we, we may further extend it in terms of o &M also. Mr. Ranganathan said that Odisha, where we are there, we would like to engage there also. So it's a good win for gas, good win for electricity. The point is, if we see at national level, can it be done? I, I, I'm not very sure it can be done because the entire distribution sector is held by DISCOMs. They are not able to manage their own, how they can manage the gas sector itself. So it, had, it can be done, no, it cannot be done. Do we see possibility that it would be done? I, I see a silver lining in terms of new electricity amendment where the retailer concept is coming and you will see more and more license. Now for them, the profitability is driven by how they can club these essential services. So some of the gas uh, licensee now you are finding in cities are also in, also in the electricity sector. So those areas, Retailers will come when they can club these services and create, create value, value for themselves, value for customers. So going forward, I, I see a lot of collaboration coming uh, in this sector, but, uh, but only after I would say when we see the amendment of electricity through in cabinet and we see more and more distribution operators in cities and then they are bundling these services and giving it to customer and customer get benefited both in terms of lower tariff and of course the hassle which Anil and Anjali mentioned that if we visit of multiple visit in a month to a consumer premises. So going forward, this is a good theme. And in fact, I would I would also suggest Reggie, why not water should also be clubbed with gas because it's essential services are actually essential services. And in India, in fact, water makes more sense uh, than gas in terms of priority.
So those are my initial thoughts, Reji. Uh, thanks again for uh, taking me on this platform to share my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, in uh, many parts of the United States, Canada and uh, Western Europe, electricity and gas is distributed by the same company. And but when you come to Middle East, uh, water and electricity is distributed by the same company because water is produced in uh, desalination plants to the power plants. So, and mm -hmm. there are some places, uh, all three being done by very select places by the same company. So this idea we've been promoting for a while, and I think uh, time has come, uh, we can do it a uh, big way. And the, the experiment of IGL and uh, Tata Power in Delhi and other places is a very good uh, example for uh, other discoms too. You, you, you expressed your doubt whether discoms will be able to state government or discoms will be able to do. There's nothing uh, un unachievable. It's a commitment. They are also capable. You have seen with a very little effort, less than six months or one year of uh, Tata Power taking over uh, Orissa. Within 24 hours, uh, it's a collective work. Everybody having leadership and commitment. The last cyclone which happened in Orissa last month, within 24 hours, you resumed 95% of the uh, uh, electricity. We covered in our last month uh, bulletin. It is a commendable effort. In, in America, even now, yeah. after a cyclone, it takes two weeks for them to resume them after supply. So uh, at the same time, Gujarat cyclone was a week before. Even 15 days down the line, they couldn't resume supply. They invited, they, they uh, requested for the uh, assistance from power grid cooperation. And Daman is not even equivalent to a, half a district of Orissa. So it's it's all about a commitment and leadership and that can be brought in in this forms also. And there are capable people down the line who can do that. So, uh, so coming back to the, uh, uh, next item. Uh, before that, let me uh, uh, recognize that there are some very honorable people attending this seminar, or, or not as speakers, but as audience. Uh, our honorable Pramod Dev, former chairperson of uh, uh, CERC, um, uh, Mr. C.R. Prasad, former CMD of Gale, uh, Mr. Uh, Vijay Sonavane, uh, former member MERC. They are all uh, from the beginning attending this program. So uh, I wanted to have you in this uh, program, sir. So I will now invite uh, Mr. Uh, Sanjay Shete, uh, Deputy Managing Director of Mahanagar Gas Limited. Over to you, sir. Uh, a very good evening to my fellow part uh, panelists as well as the participants. First of all, I would like to congratulate India Smart Gate Fed uh, Forum uh, for taking this first initiative for convergence and also on the launch of the India CGD uh, website, the forum website. Also would like to congratulate uh, Intelli Smart for doing something which all of us thought was impossible to do, especially doing it in a state like UP and Bihar and converting the, uh, you know, uh, adding the dishcoms to do a smart metering. Uh, just a brief about MGL. We are a 25-year-old company uh, operating in Mumbai, part of Thane and Raiga district. Uh, we have laid our almost 3,000 kilometers of pipeline in and around our geographical area. And we are serving presently 1.3 million households uh, through pipe natural gas. And also we have around 275 CNG stations uh, serving almost 8 lakh uh, vehicles. Uh, the BST, the, the backbone of the Mumbai travel, uh, you know, uh, the low cost travel is on, runs on CNG. Uh, we are also a listed company, uh, you know, very few uh, CGDs are listed. So we are proud to be listed on both the stock exchanges. Uh, regarding uh, the convergence, I would like, I'm very happy to see uh, Mr. Sanjay Manga from uh, Tata Power. He has mentioned about the experiment in, uh, Delhi, and uh, you know, we also have MGL also has signed a MOU with uh, Tata Power uh, in Mumbai, and that MOU covers you know sharing of IT solutions, common uh, utility revenue management, uh, common safeguard activities for the underground assets, and also the EV charging. Uh, we have taken the baby steps in terms of you know giving uh, you know access to the 
Tata Power for installing their EV charging station. We just started on that, and we hope that it will be a good partnership going ahead. Uh, just uh, you know, I would like to touch upon what my fellow panelists have mentioned, and some of them I have few observations on them. As uh, Madam Chandra has said that you know why not to use the ROU, uh, you know uh, right of way, and I must say that. Uh, you know, in order to roll out, just to give you an idea, uh, today we had, uh, you know, a few presentation in which we talked about that the PNGRB has authorized almost uh, geographical area of 50% of the geographical area covering 70% 70 per, 70 population. But that's just the authorization. The rollout will take its own time. Uh, despite being, I mean, just to give you an idea that we are in Mumbai for the last 25 years. And we have so far covered, uh, you know, 1.3 million households out of total, uh, maybe 6.6 uh, .6 or 6.7 that translates to around 20% of the coverage. Now, 1 of the biggest impediment in, in rolling out the PNG, uh, you know, pipe natural gas connection to the household is getting the right of way, especially in a city like Bombay, which is so densely populated. Uh, you know, it becomes a very, very expensive as well as a time consuming task. Now, imagine that if. We share, or if, if the municipal corporations or the other the bodies which are managing the city, they allow a, a, a common utility corridor, which is not allowed as of now. So suppose I have to uh, MGL has to lay a line, and also at the same time, you know, uh, Tata Power has to lay a uh, power line. The ROUs will be separate. The permission will be always separate. Uh, even even if if Airtel or Reliance Geo has to put in line, there are separate regulations for them. Water pipeline is is again regulated uh, in terms of it is in the domain of the municipal corporation or the local bodies. Imagine what happens if we have a a single utility corridor where all the operators of utility like water, power, you know, uh, telecom, gas, and also the the uh, you know uh, I, I, you know like data, they all converge into one utility corridor. It will become so easy and so, so much better for the population at large because there will be very few, uh, you know, uh, inconveniences caused to them due to digging and other things. And also it will be very cost effective for the uh, essential services like gas, power or water to, you know, do that. Even if we leave aside water right now because their space requirement is much higher than the, the power or the natural gas or the telecom. Even if these, these three services to be clubbed together for a start, it will be a wonderful thing which will convert into a lot of saving for the end customers. Uh, another thing which came out about the common bills, why can't we have a common bill about uh, of power and uh, gas and uh, maybe, maybe telecom? Uh, the thing is, you know, uh, there are different cycles. Like in, in, in gas, we, we bill every two months and we don't take meter reading every two months. Also, we one bill is on actual meter reading. Second bill is on assist meter, bill meter reading because the ticket size is very small. So maybe on a typical household of four people, it will be around maybe 200, people, 200 rupees or 300 rupees. Whereas in case of uh, power, they can't afford not to have a monthly billing. Because it blocks so much of their uh, working capital, and just to get an idea, before coming to Mumbai, I was uh, based in Delhi, and when I was vacating the house in the month of June, I got a bill from Delhi Jal Board for last three years, thirty-six thousand rupees. So I was just wondering that you know if I am paying thirty-six thousand rupees, I was just calculating how much money has been blocked by Delhi Jal Board purely in terms of the working capital. So, you know, definitely it makes a very, very good business sense for uh, companies like Intelli Smart to go for a swap billing for the water. But, you know, just to give, this is, a, this is actually what has happened with me. So, uh, I am pretty sure that all the people who are in Delhi will have similar experiences in terms of DJB, Delhi Jal Board. But it makes sense. Uh, Another thing which I feel, uh, you know, uh, as a forum, we must put it across uh, uh, to the to the uh, uh, to the government, both the state and the and the and the central government, is that uh, you know we must have a common standard in terms of meter meters. Right now, there is no common standard for a gas meter, 
uh, we are depending on the European standard called EN uh, EN 1359 or something like yeah 1359. And BIS is in the process of uh, you know uh, uh, you know formulating a standard which is which will we hope that uh, will it will be based on the European standard which is actually a British standard converted for the entire you know uh, used used by entire European Union. Uh, uh, offshoot of that meter is also the metrology, legal metrology. Now imagine that electric meters are not stamped by metrology, whereas for gas meter, the proposal is that we need to stamp the meter. Now that is an, uh, uh, I mean, like you know, as a as a forum, we need to debate where, whether it is really required to stamp a meter which is so accurate and you know which is working so well, and it will mean that so much of inconvenience to the customer. Uh, Another thought process which came to my mind, another thought which came to my mind is that uh, we talked about whether the uh, state defunct uh, will be able to join for convergence. Like in a typical city like Bombay, which is unique in its nature, we have four service providers in our geographical area operating. We have Adani, we have Tata Power, we have BEST, which is the government, and we also have MSCP. Uh, now, if you want to converge gas and 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 power. So on gas side, uh, there's one MGL, but on power side, there are four participants. And even then, I think if you have a, a common number, like you have a 911 number in USA, we, we can have a common number. And as the case may be, the people can be directed so that you know the call center gets updated. The 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 benefits of that gets to the entire population of the of Mumbai. So those are my initial thoughts. And once again, I congratulate ISGF for taking this dialogue on a national level. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, we, you touched upon several uh, important points. On one, I would like to uh, uh, give a little thoughts about it, which our ESCOMs are also very badly affected, which is a municipal terrorism. In most of the big cities, uh, digging, for every time digging, you have to pay big money. So for typically for cabling, if I, uh, Sanjay and others will uh, tell for 11 kV or even distribution cabling per kilometer, it costs us something around 30, 35 lakhs rupees. But municipal charges for, just for the permit to dig, I, we had to pay close to Delhi was 85 lakhs rupees per kilometer earlier. Bombay was 1.1 crore uh, per kilometer earlier. I, I don't know since last year how much they have increased or decreased, but nothing decreases, it only goes up. And uh, we've been advocating this in our distribution utility meter. Collectively, all utilities together, we should fight this. And they do nothing other than just allow you to take and they do, they do, do nothing. And uh, if they give you a utility corridor, dedicated utility corridor, their revenue is gone. Every year they get this money. <laughs> crores and crores of rupees for small digging and repair work, which uh, utilities are doing. Another common call center, yes, we already have electricity. It's a couple of years that uh, uh, Ministry of Power been able to uh, get a number, common number 1912 for electricity complaints across the country. And in very unique places like uh, Bombay or Delhi, where in one city there are multiple electricity service providers. There are very few, only two or three places we have that. There, uh, 1912 followed by one more digit to each one of them. So, but this 406 geographical areas, which you said, of which 90% uh, of the place, we need to lay the gas pipeline. For there, most of the states, there is only one electricity distribution company. The call center can be shared, the customer data can be shared, the billing system can be shared, last mile commu uh, uh, communication, so the connectivity can be shared, many such things can be shared. It, and you can actually kickstart the operation in the new uh, licensed areas. So, let me now, it was like uh, with this going back to electricity again. Mr. Rajendra Cholan couldn't join because of some government meeting in his place. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dauda from the director technical of uh, ESCOM is here. So I would request Mr. Dauda to uh, give us a speech. Mr. Gowda, you are there? So if you can hear us, you're on mute.
I, I can. So Devendra Gavada, uh, can please unmute and speak. Yeah, over to you, sir. Yeah, it's again me. I see some audio issues at this end. So let, 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 let me invite Mr. Sujit Roikar, uh, General Manager at uh, MNGL. Over to you, Sujit. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, sir. Uh, distinguished speakers and dignitaries and participants in the forum. Uh, the many points have been covered uh, during the discussion by eminent speakers and uh, I will move forward without repeating those. So we are a city gas distribution company in Pune, Pimpri, Chinchwad, Chakan, Talegao, Enjivadi. And recently ninth bidding round, we have acquired Nasik, Dhule, Sindhudurg and Ramnagara in Karnataka. We are catering to almost more than three, three and a half lakh DPNG customers, domestic customers. And we are having more than 132 CNG stations. So going forward, sir, uh, as elaborately mentioned, there are many similar similarities between the discoms that is electricity companies and gas distribution companies. And there is immense scope for sharing the assets, both physical and digital assets. Discoms and CGDs have a common customer base. Both entities follow similar workflows like laying and maintaining of utility network uh, data, data sets to the customer location, keeping record of each assets and customers, incident management, customer support and services, and utility billing. Location billing is fundamental to utility business. All the utility entities adopt a GIS to empower the workforce to leverage critical locations, data to strengthen operations and decision making from field to office. GIS is also mandated by respective regulating authorities considering safety and risk mitigation which are very inherent uh, part of the city gas distribution operations. Over last decade, GIS technology has evolved leaps and bounds. GIS today is no longer restricted to experts. It is integrated into business processes and moved from restricted client servers to portable devices, thus enhancing the productivity in many folds. Sharing of GIS map, common billing and collection systems, common call centers, sharing of last mile connectivity, for network automation and smart metering, which is important to both the entities, can be very useful for optimization of resources and inter there can be a very good amount of cost reduction, including OPEX for both the utilities. The sharing of experiences and challenges of policy makers and regulators from both the domains is equally important to collaborate city gas and electricity distribution companies and to accelerate the transition to gas based economy. Traditionally, GIS implementation has been a complex job and due to various cross-platform compatibility issues, the main objective of GIS, data sharing and publishing has been a big challenge. However, that can be addressed to a greater extent by uh, sharing the common data. India has a target to uh, attain 15% gas-based economy by 2030. And post 10th round uh, of bidding uh, conducted by PNGRB for CGD companies, they, they are catering to more than 70% of the country's population, including 407 districts spread across 28 states and union territories. So to sum up, to lay, build, operate and expand CGD network over this last stretch of land, for example, we have recently acquired a GA, which is more than 23,000 square kilometers and to accelerate and reach the potential consumers in the allocated GAs, collaboration with respective electricity distribution companies can provide a jump start to the operation of the CGD companies. But again, we have similar uh, challenges. We will be having the state electricity boards along with us for handholding. That is what is uh, from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Gavda, sir, uh, are you able to uh, resolve the Audio issue at your end. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. It, it, it was good, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. Please, uh, over to you, sir. Sir, really, actually, I am myself, Professor Devendra Goda. Uh, I am basically from uh, engineering background, sir, electrical engineering. 
and really uh, it is very great uh, opportunity to have involved this uh, such a good webinar uh, and we found out some of the i think whatever the proposed uh, uh, some of the projects sir maybe we can percolate to our student really that water electricity and gas uh, that combination having very good in a single bill i think this is a very great uh, initiative and maybe in the smart city when we are going to call smart city i think uh, this is one of the good achievements sir so uh, this is uh, i got very good uh, input from webinar sir Sir, uh, incidentally, your managing director is also the CEO of Bangalore Smart City, and uh, I, I am not very sure who is the city gas distribution licensee in Bangalore. So we should take up as a, a, a pilot project uh, on fast track in Bangalore Smart City uh, between Buscom and the uh, CGD licensee in Bangalore City. So. Uh, we, 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 this is something which you can showcase that even uh, discom state government on discom can have this kind of convergence so and look forward to your support in making that possible uh, give us, sir. Let, let me invite uh, dp uh, being the head of strategy and initiatives for public sector at amazon web services and uh, first of all she been my ex colleague in ibm long time back and uh, they are supporting uh, the, web, the website which we launched today the C india cgd forum website thank you and uh, over to you dp sorry to keep you waiting for long thanks reji i think one of the benefits of going last is that it kind of becomes a summary note or you know closing remarks kind of a thing right summarizing what all the other speakers have already talked about so uh, i'm not trying to, I, i'm there's nothing new to add really but just you know the way i have been making notes today and the way i look at things consolidating from uh, uh, from discom and, uh, and 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 the cg utility perspective you know i would look at uh, and again you know the concept of shared services has 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 existed in corporates for a very long time right where a certain uh, a certain company which is conglomerate which have lots of other uh, lot a lot of different business units they consolidate their hr functions finance functions and those kind of things uh, to become common as a shared service i really don't see any reason why you know if the same thing can't happen in utilities as well that the common function i mean uh, 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 you know, Mr. Banka talked about that as utility, your 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 business is to serve customers, right? Essentially, you're serving customers with essentials, and everyone is doing similar functions of billing, metering, billing, uh, customer service, and things like that. So, uh, so there is definitely a lot of overlap. You know, the, the benefits that I see uh, probably I would put them from three perspectives, three broad buckets. The first would be the planning and standardization aspect of things, right? So if you look at even from the basic infra planning, you know, uh, using the customer and GIS data available with discoms, can CGDs use those uh, for actually doing their own network connectivity planning, uh, you know, doing their own customer indexing, base map layer, all these things can very well be leveraged from discom, which is a very time consuming, effort intensive job, job right? So all that can very easily be leveraged by CGD uh, utilities to build their own infra planning and things like that, uh, uh, you know, pipeline planning and those kind of things, which are the clusters where they can focus first for going for consumers basis, the billing patterns and things like that. So very straightforward, the data from discoms can come in customer data, GIS data, billing pattern, consumption pattern, all those things for CGD, for CGD companies to plan their own uh, customer out, outreach. Second point, again, it got talked about in terms of standardization of devices, right? So be it standardization of devices, IT adoption, systems around CIS, billing, et cetera. You know, uh, the, 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 the electricity domain has undergone a lot of to and fro on this AMR for energy, uh, what protocol, what specs, you know, uh, open integration was lacking. Uh, so the easiest thing would be that let's build upon that learning in, 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 in you know, in the power discom, in the power sector and build that uh, for the CG, CGD companies. In that context, you know, I must compliment Reggie UNS, ISGF, that since you are, since, since you have been anchoring a lot of standardization in that aspect for so long, and you're bringing that to CGD, so I think a lot of uh, you know, learnings can be gained there. And then finally, from standardization perspective, even if we move beyond all these, uh, you know, uh, devices, IT adoption, etc., even if you look at 
customer data format itself, like address format, customer data, what all you capture, etc. So again, all that can be leveraged on this form, their own learnings and things like that, things like that. Second perspective that I look at is how the two can leverage and how CGD can gain quickly and gain and move quickly uh, uh, is the customer onboarding part of it, right? Uh, you know, know your customer aspect that we talk about. So this form already has a database, all the details are already available. Can that be leveraged to actually onboard customers for CGD quickly? Uh, consumer indexing that we talk about in utilities, right? So uh, latitude, longitude of a CGD customer can be obtained from this form instead of again going and doing all the groundwork again. And finally, you know, uh, customer behavior. So not the earlier speakers talked about the payment behavior of the customer. Uh, uh, what are the preferred modes that they have? Credit history. I mean, pretty much like banking industry talks about credit history, and they have these bodies now created to track someone's credit history and then extend loan, etc. Accordingly, right? So, so in similar utilities, also you know the customer behavior, uh, etc. Can be tracked. From one system to another. So, from customer onboarding perspective, I see these as very low hanging fruits. And finally, third bucket that I want to talk about is uh, how how you know CGDs leverage uh, 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 leverage uh, discoms is customer servicing itself, right? So, be it common call center, common bills that we can extend to customers. Again, my past speakers, my past uh, you know panelists, colleagues talk talk quite quite a bit about it. So, I'll not delve into that. But you know, so they very easily these things can be built in a common fashion: call center bills, understand customer behavior and preferences. You know, uh, what is the payment mode that a customer prefers? Is it more online interaction? Is it more in person that they like to do uh, contact details and all those kind of things? So, uh, so, so this is again something. It's, it's a very, it's a very quick thing to uh, to leverage. Now you know. Before I mean, it's 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 a no brainer that it's that there's so much more that you know. If, if utilities start to move in a shared services model, there's so much more that you know. Everyone stands to gain efficiency, optimization, costs coming down, knowing your customer better, and things like that. However, before we start on that journey, you know, uh, I think there are a lot of uh, design uh, aspects that need to be thought through very carefully. Okay, so when we talk about uh, uh, the, the electricity discom versus a CGD gas discom, you know, are there different regulatory aspect of how what data they should cap capture each one of them? The, will the two systems exchange data with each other in a very lightweight and on a need to know basis, or is it going to be tight, tight coupled integration where they have a common customer database? Mm -hmm. Would there be a need for customer consent if uh, if if if, if utility if, if this form wants to share that data with uh, CGD? So you know a lot of these thought processes, all these aspects need to thought through, and all these need to be baked in the design itself, on the system architecture and the design itself. Uh, next, you know we're talking about so many so many new systems uh, coming up. I mean CGD will bring in a whole set of new solution. It's it's nice, it was rather early stages of evolution, right? But if you look at Discom also, so many transformation, modernization projects are going on there. Smart metering, data warehouse, analytics, IoT-based solutions for reducing you know, uh, technical losses, so on and so forth. So how can the entire architecture be made more agile and scalable? How do we allow for experimentation and quick innovation? You know, innovation typically needs a lot of experimentation. And experimentation means that some will fail, some will come out in flying colors. So how do we build those mechanisms for fail fast, fail quick, do quick, uh, quick experimentation and you know, develop solutions on the fly? So, so all these things would need to be you know, given proper thought through and planning on how do we really build a, how do we really build a very really agile, scalable, uh, uh, you know, a fail fast, fail proof, uh, fail cheap kind of a platform. Can that be built? You know, uh, 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 pilot as you go, pay as you go, all those kind of models that need to come in. And some of the past speakers, including uh, Mr. Raval from IntelliSmart, talked about how they're building everything on cloud so that you know you don't have to worry about the undifferentiated heavy lifting of IT and try and focus really on your core business, right? And then finally, you know, uh, there's some common elements that we're talking about, like what will be the common identifier for customer. Talk about common call centers. How can data from two different systems be pulled up by a single call center by a single agent? We talk about common billing. You know, uh, how will revenue get apportioned across each utility and the common infra that is set up? Uh, Mr. Sanjay talked about uh, you know uh, the gas billing being bi-monthly and electricity being monthly. So how do you how do you converge on a common billing period? 
then the concept of prepaid versus postpaid. So how do you really get into all those things? So all these aspects again will need thinking through. And then I think the biggest question to answer would be who owns the overall IT systems? Right, uh, you know, uh, we have seen this issue in our country a lot that the sense of ownership is very, very strong. Who owns which system, how it all gets driven and so on and so forth. So uh, will there be a third party, a common entity set up on top of all these utilities who own these IT systems or, you know, uh, are, uh, or is it an outsourcing agreement from one entity to another from say CGD to this can CGD outsource its IT system to this form. So I think what will be the S SLA requirement and things like that. So I think even that aspect would need a lot of thinking through. So yeah, so just to summarize, uh, and since I am sitting between all of you and your evening tea, uh, you know, we have a lot to gain, no doubt about it, both as utility and as customer, if power and gas utilities can come together. As previous speaker said, cost efficiency, faster rollout, shortening learning curve for CGD, all those things happen, right? So therefore, we need to ensure that uh, we, we give a proper thinking through, ensure that systems are thought through upfront, they're designed in the right and agile manner. And then I think uh, uh, the success that we'll see from this entire initiative is going to be humongous. So yeah, so thanks, Vijay. That's it from my side. Thank you. There are many questions. Uh, I, I don't think we have time to go through one by one. Uh, we lost almost 100 people. <laughs> At some point in time, we had 206 people. Now we have 106 people. So uh, uh, many people have other engagements. So what I'll do, I'll come back to all of you for one one minute last comments, concluding remarks. So we'll start with uh, 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 Mr. Sika, over to you. You are still there, sir? It has been very interesting hearing out all the panelists and the views and, um, uh, and I would, uh, again, in terms of numbers, still, I would like to say the potential, which is there available in front of each one of us, uh, the sheer number of PNG domestic connections, which the gas industry have laid so far is 78.2 lakhs, whereas the total number of, uh, Electrical connections in India currently is more than 20 crores. Mr. Pele may be like to correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So the potential in the terms of numbers is simply overwhelming. Now, as Deepthi also said just now, we have to have design, how to knit it, how to weave it together. We need to have co we need to have some kind of uh, cooperation philosophy, if I may use the word, because we have, we are still at a very, uh, we, uh, this, this forum today has set the, I would say the discussion, set the agenda that these things can be done in a structured manner. Of course, IGL had done it, I must say, I was there as director commercial in IGL when it happened between Tata Power and uh, IGL. So, it has started from one company. Like Sanjay also said a uh, few moments back, maybe they have also explored with Tata Power now at Mumbai. Uh, but uh, there are challenges and uh, the alignment, the alignment which should be done uh, among the various DISCOMs and the CGDs and how to do it. That's a challenge, but I simply see the potential huge. Only one more point I would like to say, we have been talking about the data, we have been talking about the customer insights, the customer privacy, privacy of the customer data, which is a very uh, topic which is being discussed these days. So we need to be sure about that. We need to have disclaimers from the customer, appropriate non-disclosure agreements as well. I thought I must flag this issue right now because that is something which is very, very essential in these days of, or I would say, uh, uh, in these days where everyone is so uh, uh, sacrosanct about his uh, privacy details. So with these, I, I really enjoyed listening to all the participants and yes, we have, we can make a beginning together. That's what my uh, take is. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, over, over to you, Anjali. Madam.
Madam Anjali Chandra, you, are, you can unmute and speak for your concluding remarks. Uh, I think she can't hear me. I'll come to Sanjay and then go back to Madam when she's available. Sanjay? Mr. Sanjay Banga, are you there? Uh, over to you, Mr. Andrew Ravel. Yeah. Uh, yes, sure. So um, I think uh, this is one of the very interesting discussions, at least I had on the on gas and electricity coming together. I'm sure, uh, Reggie, your vision is even far more wider, and that's what country needs. Uh, all utilities coming together and uh, uh, probably synergizing. I would believe uh, digital is the story and we should first connect on digital and on the back end before we connect actually on the bill side and that's where things are far more ready and uh, that's where we should start doing um, and i think time has arrived uh, this is the idea for which time has really arrived and uh, this has been really really good discussion very good start on the very critical topic for for say uh, the for the utilities and the services they provide to the consumers that's what my take would be on this Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing Indeli Smart taking the lead in bringing all of them together on one platform. Certainly, yes. Certainly, yes. Thank you. With, 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 with all so, uh, participation and collaboration, we can do it. Thank you. So, uh, Madam Anjali Chandra, are you there? I'll now come to Mr. Shende. Uh, over to you, Sanjay Shende. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, the potential uh, for convergence to deliver superior customer experiences is humongous for all the utility companies. And the other good news will be that it will also bring the cost competitiveness for the utility companies. And, you know, just to uh, uh, give you, uh, I just wanted to close with two uh, of my observations. One is that Though we are talking about uh, so much of coverage of CGDs uh, throughout the country, but if we actually look at the numbers, say we are talking about 50% uh, geographical areas and 70% population coverage. Uh, but if you actually see the numbers on the ground, you know, the Delhi, Mumbai, uh, or you may say Mumbai, Pune, and Gujarat put together contributes to presently 80% of the total coverage. So though the authorization is there, but the actual coverage on the ground is not there. So the point I want to dwell upon is that there's a huge potential for other parts of the country, which will be purely a virgin area. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the potential for collaboration in the rest of the India will be also very high. Second is, you know, though uh, you talked about something called municipal terrorism, Mr. Pillay, <laughs> but I would like to just give you an example that, you know, things are changing. I um, mean, you know, uh, uh, recently uh, there was this pipeline which Gale is laying. I am from Gale, so presently I'm deputation to Mahanagar Gas. Uh, so Gale is laying, which is called Mumbai Nagpur Jarasogoda pipeline. And this is being laid along a new highway, which is called as Mumbai Nagpur Samruddhi Mahamar. Now, this highway is being built by uh, a company, government of Maharashtra company called Maharashtra State Road Development Corporation. And they have initiated, they have built a utility corridor along the road. And our entire 700 kilometer pipeline from Mumbai or maybe from Thane to Nagpur will be along this highway. Now, imagine that on after payment of the ROE charges, which constitute to around 430 crore rupees, Gale has the entire ROU on day one to lay the line. So it's not that things are not changing, but you know uh, we we need as a forum to give some such examples to ensure that we have a common utility corridor to roll out the services. Uh, so that's that's my small point. Very good, very very good, excellent, excellent. Nice to hear that. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, you. and once again, I thank for taking an excellent initiative by ISGF as well as Natural Gas Society. Uh, you know, I, I forgot to mention them in the beginning. So, uh, and we look forward to more interaction, uh, even in the virtual form rather than in a physical form. Uh, hopefully, uh, there won't be any third way so that we can have a proper conferences. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, such interaction. Thank you very much. Look forward to, sir. Uh, so, Madam Anjali Chandra, are you back? Can you hear me? She's still muted. So, uh, I now come to Sujit and then to DP. To you, Sujit. Mr. Sujit, are you there? No. Yeah, give the final words to you. Dipti? You're also, can you hear Dipti? I don't find you as well. So, oh, I missed uh, Mr. Gowda. Uh, sir, can you, is your audio working? Can you come give your final concluding remarks? I think, I think uh, uh, Mr. Vipin, Mr. Vipin uh, Chitoda, uh, uh, has raised his hand. He wants to say something. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Vipin Chitoda, sir. Over to you, Chitoda, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding. Uh, actually, it was uh, towards the point when Mr. Sanjay was talking about how uh, municipal corporations are not allowing uh, uh, laying up multiple utility in the same corridor. That it came to my mind that there are two points which are very important. Though we are talking of a smart city and all those things, we'll have to first think of smart municipal corporations. Because all these things are confined and correlate to those authorities which are managing the streets of the city or the um, village. Everybody has to go them and they do not have enough infrastructure or intelligence to process your information and then you are on the file or on the desk. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, you look at it, IGL reported that their permissions time is greatly reduced when Delhi government has digitized their uh, street maps and the utility. If this happens so in other area, then probably the permissions will be faster and maybe something more could be talked about on this. If GIS is done by municipal corporation as local authority, all other utility has to need to feed to them their path and their uh, coordinates and everybody can view it. It's a common. Having only city gas distribution as GIS or a power utility having their own GIS will not definitely suffice because when we are on the road, we are crossing each other. And I, as my experience is uh, in the MGL for last four, five, six years when I was there, is that 90% accident or fire took place because there was misunderstanding about digging in the ground. That, that's one biggest safety which originate from uh, there. The second thing which Sanjay has uh, said, and I think it is the right time to do, is the meteorological department who are all bent upon to uh, storm the every meter, every five years, six years or 10 years. Imagine all electrical meters are to be restamped every 10 years. How much meters will be required to restamp and do we have that facility and is it necessary? We can have yeah. meter which is 3000, 4000 rupees or whatever it costs. There's one time stamping and if it is not working through it, don't try to repair, don't try to re-stamp it. Don't now we are going to repeat all the... We are going to change all the 250 million, uh, about 25 crore electricity meters, which will happen on fast track very soon. So um, uh, that's not going to be, uh, and that is for 10 years. Huh? 
Yeah, you have to give a meter life is typically seven years to ten so years. So Less the meter after ten years, that's okay. But then yeah. we cannot do re-stamping and re no, no, no. On a smart meter, very, you can't very, do that. Smart yeah, meter, very, you very, do that. very, very cumbersome. Amount yeah. of manpower and security and in the, in, intruding into the customers for privacy and all those things and you know, will be a very big uh, this thing. Third thing, definitely telecoms are much advanced than city gas distribution. But still there are many areas of cooperation which will be open and there and I really congratulate you and Mr. Deepak Shastri for organizing this kind of seminar. So my all the compliments and the good wishes for future such kind of seminar to be held jointly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I look forward to your support and blessings. So uh, the first thing is what we will do because we are almost one hour uh, delayed. We will be sent in after two, three days, we will be sending the recording. All the registered participants will be receiving the link for the recording. And along with that, we will circulate a written reply to all the questions. So some of the questions are related to metering and the protocol standards, etc. So as we had uh, mentioned, we had already written to ISGF and NGS has written to Bureau of Indian Standards for constituting a committee, a technical committee, which will formulate the standards. As far as the standards are concerned, the communication part of it, by and large, will follow the same DLS process for which we already have IS 15959 part 2. So the data format can be same for gas meter for the, uh, the, the electricity meter. So the technical committee will finally take a decision so that the data comes can be analyzed with the same set of tools. So with this, I will stop hand over back to you, uh, uh, Ashima, for the Thank you. Thank you all our eminent panelists for sharing your expertise and knowledge with us. Uh, I would request all the speakers to kindly turn on their cameras for a group photograph. All, 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 all are not there now. All are uh, uh, eminent very, panelists. Very few are there. Half, half of them are gone. So, no worries. Yeah, sir. Those, those who are there, we can have a picture. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I would like to invite Mr. D.V. Shastri, Executive Director, Natural Gas Society, for the mm -hmm. vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. It was a really a very interesting uh, discussion based on the practical experience. Because all the panelists and other speakers, they are all having first-hand experience. Like, uh, to give an example, like, you know, while uh, laying down the utility lines or other things, it is very difficult that the one entity takes up a job and the uh, other ones, things are getting disturbed. And particularly in pipelines, whether it is cross-country pipelines or the city gas distribution network, this is the biggest problem, the third party damage. So we can think of a common number, like in the US, I have also been a member of uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers and they have one common number 811 and its uh, title is Dial Before You Dig. So before undertaking any kind of activity by any or any entity, they have to first dial this number so that necessary coordination can be done so that the, the pipeline route or the cable route, whatever, can be, uh, you know, cross-checked with the existing utilities and there is no damage caused to the existing ones. Having said this, as I said in the beginning, today's business is very complex, competition is unprecedented and the change is very rapid. In fact, obsolescence is so fast that whatever is relevant today evening may not be relevant tomorrow. So therefore, knowledge leadership is very important, pooling of resources is very important. And therefore, as uh, the ED of ISGF also mentioned, that knowledge sharing, capability building, and skills building, these are very, very important areas. For example, like Mr. Chittola and Mr. Sikka, they are here. They know very well that in the city sector, there is a uh, shortage of qualified plumbers. In terms of headcount, you can find many. But those who are having the real expertise, to perform the task relevant to CGD sector, we, we find a gap. 
So it is a need, and therefore the oil and gas sector has already established six skill development institutes in different parts of the country, namely at Ahmedabad by ONGC, uh, at Bhuvne. So you muted? Can you? Please? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I was mentioning about the skill development institutes. ONGC has set up at Ahmedabad, Indian Oil at Bhubaneswar, Gale at Raibareli, HPCL at Vizag, Bharat Petroleum at Kochi, and Oil India at Guwahati. So the, the, the basic objective of setting up of such skill development institutes is to get the manpower which is ready to be deployed on the job, particularly in the context of CGD. Further, there is a concept of RTL, that is recognition of prior learning. There are many workers like electricians, welders, plumbers, etc., who by inheritance, they have got those skills, but they do not have the, the fundamental knowledge before uh, performing a particular task. So this was also undertaken by Gale and other companies in a big way, and our this uh, Urja Ganga pipeline, Pradhan Mantri Urja Ganga, that is uh, you know, Haldia, Jagdishpur, uh, the Hamra pipeline. Uh, across that, several thousands of such uh, workers have been imparted training for uh, recognition of their prior learning. Then, uh, to share with you that I have been the head of learning and development of corporate training department of Gale. There, we took the initiative of launching the ASME certificate courses. We entered into a license agreement with ASME, and now those courses are offered. They are open. Anybody can be nominated from any organization. So that is one of uh, the initiatives which was taken. And uh, Gale Training Institute is an exclusive institute of Gale. And since I, I have superintended from Gale, I know what capabilities Gale is having. So let us take the advantage of capabilities of Gale India Limited for which NGS will be very happy to be an enabler and a facilitator. So with these words, I really express my sincere thanks and gratitude to our Honorable Secretary Petroleum, Mr. Tarun Kapoor, Mr. E.F. Ranganathan, Director of Marketing Gale, the distinguished panelists, Mr. Rajiv Sikka, my good friend, Madam Anjali Chandra from Punjab Electricity Regulatory Commission, Mr. Sanjay Banga from Tata Power, Mr. Anil Rawal from IntelliSmart, Mr. Sanjay Shinde, my, again my colleague from Mahanagar Gas Limited, Mr. Sumit Gunikar from MNGL, I'm and Professor Devendra Gowda. Uh, who are specially invited so the I'm colleagues from I come? I'll be standing. the host hosts uh, it is not singular that is they are a joint host mr reji pillai madam reena soni ashima and others and the most important without whom this event could not have been poss possible is the distinguished participants like uh, Mr. Vinod Swamy, former member of Maharashtra ERC, Mr. C. R. Prasad, ex C. M. B. Gale, Mr. Vinod Sinha, former chairman C. E. R. C., and participants from various public sector undertakings and other entities whose active participation made this uh, event very successful, and we look forward to having continuous interaction with all of you to get your inputs. So that there is pooling of resources, there is sharing of experience and knowledge, the issues like formulation of standards are relevant to Indian context. Yes, globally standards are available, but there are many local issues, uh, keeping in which we need to frame our own standards. And this is also a forum where the common problems being experienced by industry members can be uh, put up to the policy makers and request them to make necessary amendments wherever necessary. And in fact, this is an ongoing journey. There is no end to improvement. So let us uh, uh, 
conclude by saying that yes, we are together with each other in this journey towards excellence. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you. Namaste. Thank you very much, sir, for the vote of thanks. Um, I would like to thank all the eminent speakers and panelists for sharing their experience and knowledge with us and all the participants for joining us for this webinar. That's for the day. Thank you very much and have a good evening and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best and see you, you all soon.